Amino? Mino? Each day is an opportunity to grow. I hope we make the most of it. Wishing you all a very good morning. Math is the only place where truth and beauty mean the same thing. It's my pleasure to extend a cheerful welcome to you all on behalf of our college and our department who has clapped all of us for the second day of the International Conference on Algebra and Discrete Mathematics 2022. Let's begin today's session with the blessings of Almighty. I invite Anugraha of Second DC Math for the prayer song. There shall be showers of blessing. This is the promise of love. There shall be seasons refreshing. Sent from the Savior Reba, showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy drops round us are pouring, but for the showers we plead. There shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, sound of abundance of rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. Mercy from sound of support. Now, now we move on to the next session. It's an invited lecture. I invite Dr. Minu Sarbi, ma'am, for inviting and introducing Dr. Kala, who will give us a lecture on the topic. Domain and coloring in graph. Good morning to all and all who are present in the international conference. The Department of Mathematics of Fatima Mada National College is indeed fortunate to have Dr. R. Kalam Ma'am as a resource person of the two-day international conference. She is a renowned mathematician and a distinguished scholar of graph theory. She has 23 years of teaching experience and has to her credit of 29 years of research experience. She has produced 27 PhDs as guide and co-guide. She is an erudite scholar as she could claim an excellent academic record of 127 research articles in referred journals and to her merit three books. Dr. Kalama was a former co coordinator of IQC, MS University, Tirnalveli. Now, she is the professor and head of the Department of Mathematics and the, chair, and the chairperson of 
World Women's Welfare Committee, MS University, and member of Board of Studies for various colleges. She is a life member of Academy of Discrete Mathematics and Indian School of Sciences. We are very lucky to have you amongst us, ma'am. With all respect, we, the Department of Mathematics, Fatima Mada National College, and I personally welcome my most beloved teacher and one of my most inspiring role model, Dr. R. Kala, ma'am, to the International Conference ICADM 2022. We welcome you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. What do you, ma'am? So, good morning to. Shall I start, Menu? Okay, ma'am. You can start, ma'am. So, my heartiest good morning to each and everyone who has joined this day in this virtual mode. So, the respected management of Fatima Mada National College, the principal, the head of the department, the other faculty members. So good morning to each and every one of you. So, at the outset, let me thank the organizers for giving me this opportunity. And a special thanks to Minu Sarathi for the welcome she has given. So the topic of today's lecture is uh, Minu, is it okay, the video? Minu? Ma'am, uh, video is not visible, ma'am. I think there is some problem. I don't know why. Uh... It's not visible, ma'am. Yeah. Is it okay now? No, ma'am, it's not. Uh, okay, ma'am. Okay, it's okay now, ma'am. It's visible now, ma'am. Uh, okay, okay. So the topic of today's lecture is domination and coloring. So let me start sharing the screen. Um, you know, the host should allow me to share. Okay, ma'am. Okay. I will share it. Ah, okay. It's okay, yeah, okay, it's okay, it's okay. okay. So is my screen visible to you? Uh, is my screen visible, ma'am? Okay. Yes, ma'am, yes. So, Minu, you know, whenever there is problem, you please call me either through phone or through this one, okay? Okay, ma'am, okay, ma'am, sure, ma'am, sure. So, this is my topic that is domination and coloring in graphs. Okay. So, these two areas that is graph domination and graph coloring. So, it has both of them has equally grown in the past years. And recently, for the past 10 years, the researchers they have started working on associating these two things that is the domination number and the chromatic number, both of them are associated and several other parameters are defined connecting these two. So to recall, let me start with definition of a dominating set. So you take any graph, let me denote the vertex set by V and the edge set by E. So a subset of the vertex set that is called a dominating set. If every vertex in the complement that is in V minus S is adjacent to a vertex in S. In this case, we can also say that S is a dominator of V minus S. And the domination number that is defined as the minimum cardinality of a dominating set in G. And proper coloring, that is an assignment of colors to the vertices in such a way that no two vertices receive the same color. And the chromatic number, chi of G, that is the minimum number of colors required for a proper color. So, for example, suppose if I have a graph like this, say a path, a path on four vertices. Okay. So, if I take this vertex 
into my dominating set. Then this vertex lies outside. It is adjacent to that. This vertex lies outside. So it is adjacent to that. But there is no vertex to take care of this. So either I have to include this one or I have to include this one. So the number, the, this one, either suppose if I take this. Now this is a dominating set. Okay. And coming to coloring. Uh, coming to coloring, I can use color 1 for this vertex. I can use color 2 for this vertex. Again, I can use color 1 for this and color 2 for this. So the minimum, I can see that no two adjacent vertices receive the same color. So the minimum number of colors that I need is only 2. Okay. So this is the definition of a dominating set. So the for, for the past 10 years, so many parameters are defined relating domination and colorings. I'll be giving the definition of some four parameters and in detail we shall see some two parameters today. Okay. So the first one is definition of fall coloring. It was defined by Dunbar et al. So you can see that whenever you color the vertices that will partition the set of vertices into color classes. That is all the vertices receiving the same color. That is an independent set and that form a class. It is called as a color class. Okay. So if I take V1, it is the set of all vertices having color 1. V2 is the set of all vertices having color 2. So VK will be the set of all vertices having color K. So such a coloring that is called as a fall coloring if the closed neighborhood of V. Okay. That is N of V intersection VI is non-empty. So whatever vertex I take, either the vertex should be colored I or one of its neighbors should have the color I. That is what you mean by this equation. In such case, you call that coloring as fall coloring. So if a graph has a fall coloring, then you can see that every color class is a dominating set. Because for every vertex, either you have the vertex inside or you have a neighbor inside. So every color class is a dominating set. So the minimum K is called fall chromatic number that is denoted by IF. And the second parameter is B coloring. This is coloring the vertices in such a way that each color class contains a vertex which has a neighbor in all other color classes. Okay. So the maximum is called as B chromatic number denoted by chi B. And third one is dominating chi coloring. This parameter you would study in detail. Okay. You take BC. That is the number of color classes which are dominating sets. So take any graph, give a proper coloring for the graph, collect the color classes. You want to find out the number of color classes that are dominating sets. And the DOM chromatic number is defined as maximum of DC. That is the possible way of coloring the vertices in such a way that the dominating sets are maximum. Okay, that is called as DOM chromatic number. And this one is chromatic transversal domination. You know, if you are given a set of straight lines, transversal is a straight line which intersects all the lines. Okay. So chromatic transversal domination that is called as DCC set, that is a dominating set which intersects every color class for every chi coloring. And the minimum cardinality is the chromatic Transversal domination number. Okay. And now this is the fifth parameter that you are going to see in detail. It is called as dominator coloring and was introduced by Gera et al. Okay. And later, Professor R. Muham, Shahul Hamid and many others, they have made reasonable contributions to this. So take a vertex V. When do you say that V is a dominator of a set S? So a vertex V is a dominator of a set S if V dominates every vertex in S. Okay. So if V is adjacent to every vertex in a set S, we say that V is a dominator. So you take a partition of the vertex set V1, V2, etc., Vk that is called a dominator partition. 
if every vertex is a dominator of at least one vi so whatever vertex v you take it should be adjacent to all the vertices of at least one color class okay and the dominator partition number pi d of g that is the minimum k for which my graph has a dominator partition so if you further require that this phi is a proper coloring then it is called as a dominator coloring of g and the dominator chromatic number that is chi d of g that is the minimum number of colors required for a dominator coloring okay so what you have to do you have to give proper coloring to the vertices in such a way that whatever vertex you take okay that should be adjacent to all the vertices in at least one color class or in other words it should be a dominator of at least one color class so whenever you define a parameter you should give the justification whether the parameter will exist for every graph here you can see that suppose if the worst case i color every vertex by a different color so suppose if there are n vertices i use n colors and color v1 v2 etc vn using these n colors then my color classes will be single transex okay and definitely every vertex dominates itself so if you take v1 v1 is adjacent to v1 so v1 is adjacent to all the vertices in the color class v1 in that way you can take so definitely this partition is a dominator partition of order n but of course you want to find out the minimum so i want to i can say that this chi d is less than or equal to n and also it is well defined well defined in the sense it exists for every graph okay you consider this graph let me draw it in the okay so graphs like this this is one i have this so it is a bipartite graph but not complete so this vertex is adjacent to these two vertices this is adjacent to all the three okay and say this is adjacent to only two so you take them as one two three four five six so you know that a, a chromatic number for a bipartite graph is two so two colors are needed suppose if i take this graph as g okay chromatic number chi that is two and there is a unique way for coloring this bipartite graph i can color all the vertices in the so that is 1 2 and 3 using one color and all the vertices 4 5 and 6 using another color okay let me check whether this coloring is a dominator coloring so the color classes will be 1 2 3 is one color class because that is the first partition color having all the vertices to be color 1 so 1 2 3 is one color class 4 5 6 is another color class okay so if you look at vertex 1 vertex 1 itself is not a dominator of any of this color classes okay so if i take 2 that is the dominator for 4 5 6 because 2 is adjacent to all the three vertices so 1 3 4 they are all not dominated dominated by this set of vertices so what you do is two colors is not enough so what you do is instead of taking four here you take four as a separate color class so now i am using three colors i color 1 2 3 all 1 2 3 with one color four with the second color and five and six with the third color now if you look at one it is adjacent to five and six that is this color class if you take two that is also adjacent to five and six this color class if you take three it is adjacent to 5 and 6 this color class if you take 5 it is adjacent to 1 2 3 okay this color class and if you take 6 it is adjacent to 1 2 3 and coming to 
simpleton 4 is color class. So 4 is adjacent to all the vertices in this color class. So this is how you check whether a chromatic partition is a dominator partition. So you are able to manage using three colors. So for this graph, the chromatic number is 2, but the dominator chromatic number is 3. Okay. So this is how you check. So ID for this graph is 3. If you look at this graph, again you have a triangle with three pendant vertices. So triangle is complete graph. So I need three colors to color these three vertices because they are mutually adjacent. But looking at the pendant vertices, I can manage with the same three colors. The color that I have used here can be used here. So the color that I have used here can be used for this vertex. So it is possible to give a proper coloring using three colors. But that proper coloring will not be a dominator coloring. Because if you take this pendant vertex, it is adjacent only to this vertex. Okay. So, but I would have used the color for this vertex to some other pendant vertex. So, the color class will contain two elements, but this vertex will be adjacent to only one element. And being a pendant, it can be adjacent to only one element. So, this coloring is not a dominated coloring. So what to do in order to get a dominator coloring? You color all the three pendants using the fourth color. So one color one, two color two, three color three, and four, five, and six. All the three vertices you color with color four. Now you can very well see that this is a dominator partition. Okay. So this is how you color the vertices in such a way that it is a dominator partition. So you consider the by star. You know by star. So by star is B M comma N. Okay. So by star looks like this. So by star will be like this. You have a K2. And here you can have any number of pendant vertices. So it is two stars. Okay. And the centers of the two stars are joined by an edge. That is that is what it, that is how you can look at a by star. So this is a by star. So I can color. Actually, it is a chromatic, it is a bipartite graph. So chromatic number is two. But if you color with the two colors, definitely it is not a, a dominated partition. So what you do is, you color this with 1, you color this with 2, and all the pendants you color with color 3. So I have 3 color classes, singleton 1, singleton 2, and all the other vertices will form a color class, singleton 3. Okay. So if you take whatever vertex you take, singleton 1, that is adjacent to singleton 1, okay, singleton 2, adjacent to singleton 2, and then any pendant vertex in this part, all of them are adjacent to the color class 1. Similarly, any pendant vertex in this part that is adjacent to the color class 2. So every vertex is a dominator of some color class. So you need three colors okay, so that it becomes a dominator coloring. So tidy of B M comma N, that is 3. And if it is a star, Star is a graph for which the chromatic number as well as dominator chromatic number, both of them are the same. So, KD of K1, N, that is 2. If you take a KN, that is the complete graph, okay. you can see that every vertex is adjacent to every other vertex. So, definitely the chromatic number itself turns to be N. So, every singleton will be a color class. So, automatically it is a dominator partition. So, KD is equal to N. And for a path, of course, you can calculate. You can see that for 2, 3, 4, 5, and 7, you have this. And for all, all the others, you have this. Coming to wheel. So, wheel is a graph which looks like this. So, wheel is a graph which looks like this one. You have a center vertex here. And then you have spokes. Okay. So, this is adjacent to all the vertices. 
and that is adjacent by forming a circle so this is how your wheel looks like so if i so definitely the color that i have used for the center vertex namely color 1 cannot be used for any other vertex because that is adjacent to all the other vertices so this is a single color class so this alone is enough to take take care of the dominated property because every other vertex is adjacent to this and this is a single tenfold class so the dominated property will be taken care of this by this one now coming to coloring you know no fact if a cycle is an even cycle i can color it using two colors alternatively i can use the two colors and if it is an odd cycle i need three because there will be a one man which is odd man out so that has to be colored using a third color so if the cycle is odd i need four colors and if the cycle is even i need three colors okay so that is kd of wn so the center vertex will have one color and two vertices for the outer cycle if n is even so totally three and three vertices for the outer cycle if n is odd okay and for a complete k partite graph for every partition you need one color so if you have k partitions you need k colors so star can be generalized to a multi star multi star means a star is like this a singleton vertex okay and that is adjacent to all the other vertices so how do you define a multi star so it is a generalization of a star you instead of taking this as a single vertex you treat it as k1 okay so it is k1 so the next step is i can take k2 and then i can have any number of pendants that is a bi star okay so i can have any number of pendants attached to the vertices of k2 similarly i can take i can replace k1 by k3 so i have k3 so every vertex is adjacent to any number of pendants like this so this is how you generalize a star to a multi star so later i can replace this k3 by k4 k5 anything okay and so here you can see that there is a complete graph sitting here on n vertices so i have a kn inside and at every vertex of kn you can have any number of pendant vertices and this is a complete graph on n vertices so definitely i need n colors to color the vertices and then all the other things are pendants so i have n plus 1 colors i need n plus 1 colors i color kn with n colors and all the pendants using one color okay so that is kd of km that is n plus 1 okay and this is for cycle and then you have the hypercube in one paper gera conjectured that kd of the hypercube qn is 2 plus 2 power n minus 2 but we observe that this conjecture is false because for example if you take n equal to 7 kd of q7 is 18 okay whereas this number is something large so kd for kd the conjecture becomes false okay so kd means it is a proper coloring okay it is the number of what is number of colors in a proper coloring with an additional condition that is every vertex is a dominator of at least one color class so definitely every kd coloring is a proper coloring so always you have chi less than or equal to kd so this is always true so this inequality it poses a set of problems you can characterize all those graphs for which chi g equal to chi d of g so that is an open problem now only some classes of graphs have been found for which chi g equal to chi d and there are graphs where the inequality is strict and also there are graphs for which you have equality if i take the bi star as we saw the chi is 2 whereas chi d is 3 so you have strict inequality here but if you look at k 1, n both of them are 2 so you have equality so this gives rise to one problem okay and then for a given sub graph g and you have a sub graph you may normally we have an idea we may have think or intuition 
that the denominator chromatic number for subgraph will be smaller than that of the original graph but it is not so so the denominator chromatic number of the subgraph may be smaller or may be larger okay it depends on the graph so for example if i take gfkn so that is the complete graph on n vertices i take h as the complete bipartite graph k a comma b where a and b are n then i can see that for h chi d is 2 whereas for g chi d is n okay so for the subgraph here it becomes smaller and in the other case suppose if i take g as the complete bipartite graph k n comma n and definitely i can path i can find a path on two n vertices as a subgraph so take h as p to comma n you can see that for g the number is 2 whereas for this h the number is this one which is greater than or equal to 5 okay so it may be large so it depends and then you can see that this is a bound in terms of alpha alpha is the independence number that is the maximum number of vertices in an independent set okay and you mean and by an independent set a set of vertices no two of them are adjacent so in fact every color class will be an independent set okay so you have a bound for chi d chi d of g less than or equal to n plus 1 minus alpha so actually the proof is very simple what you do is you take an independent set so with cardinality alpha being independent i can color all the vertices of that set using one color okay and the remaining vertices so there will be n minus alpha of g vertices lying outside the independent set color each vertex by a single color okay so i have used alpha plus n minus alpha colors outside so now all the vertices of the independent set alpha they are colored using the same color that is one okay the remaining n minus alpha vertices each is colored with a different color so the total number of colors that you have used is n minus alpha plus 1 that is this upper bound now i claim that this is a dominator coloring you can see that your set is a maximum independent set so every vertex outside should be adjacent to at least one vertex inside okay or outside vertices they form singleton color classes so if you take a vertex in the independent set definitely every vertex in the independent set should be adjacent to at least one vertex outside so every vertex in the independent set will be a dominator of one singleton color class okay so this shows that your partition is a dominator partition and whenever you give a bound you have to exhibit the sharpness of the bound that is you have to give some graphs for which the equality holds only in that case you can see that it is a better bound and for this you have b m comma n you can see that alpha of b comma n is sum of all the pendant vertices that is m plus n that is p minus 2 and chi d is 3 so equality holds for that case okay and this gives you another problem that is the characterizing all those graphs for which chi d equal to n plus 1 minus alpha okay so that is that is again an open problem and then you see some simple results and this is always there definitely if you have a connected graph i should have at least two non adjacent vertices so i cannot manage with one color if i could manage with one color means then all there should not be any edge at all all the vertices are isolated vertices but that cannot be the case in a connected graph so i have chi d greater than or equal to 2 and naturally the obvious upper bound is less than or equal to n and here again you can give graphs for which the two low extremities are attained so if chi d of g when the two if and only if i can show that it is the complete bipartite graph a comma b one part is obvious if you take your g s k m comma b automatically you can 
color all the vertices in the upper partition with one color all the vertices in the lower partition with another color so you have chi d is 2 okay. conversely you take chi d equal to 2 and you want to show that the graph is k a comma b so you since chi d is 2 i have two color classes okay and that is the dominator coloring so every vertex in the first color class that should be adjacent to all the vertices in the second color class similarly every vertex in the second color class should be adjacent to all the vertices in the first color class so this shows that and you know color classes are independent so this shows that my graph is the complete bipartite graph k a comma b and the second one is chi d is n you find only if g is k n so you this part is immediate assume that chi d is n so i have n color classes okay you want to show that your graph is k n so suppose if my graph is not complete then definitely i have two non adjacent vertices say u and v now u and v are non adjacent so they can be put into the same color class so i have a partition with at most n minus 1 color classes which cannot happen because chi d is equal to n okay definitely i should have the minimum number of color classes to be n but here you could manage with n minus 1 color classes which is not possible and so your graph should be kn it should be the complete graph okay and the second one that is a generalization of the first theorem you remove this connected the first theorem is for a connected graph so what if the graph is not connected here i don't have a connected graph it is any graph of order n i want to show that chi d is equal to n if and only if g is this one okay what is this i have a complete graph k a together with the remaining or all trivial graphs k1 okay so my idea is it can have only one non trivial component because now i have removed connectedness so my graph can have any number of components what i have to show that is there can be only one non trivial component okay what will happen if my graph has two or more non trivial components so you fix two non trivial component okay already you have chi d is equal to n and since the two components are non trivial the first vertex should be adjacent to all the other vertices of at least one so that cannot be a single ten okay so it has to be adjacent to all the other vertices of the second color class okay. similarly the other way so you have a contradiction so which shows that it can have only one non trivial component it cannot have more than one non trivial component okay and then this gives some lower as well as upper bounds already you saw an upper bound that is in terms of alpha and this gives an upper bound as well as lower bound in terms of chi and gamma so the lower bound is chi d greater than or equal to maximum of this in fact you can show that chi less than or equal to chi d as well as gamma less than or equal to chi d but being a lower bound so it is greater than or equal to maximum of that okay and then i want to say that this is an upper bound so one part is immediate that is chi less than or equal to chi d that is obvious that we have proved already now what i want to show that is gamma of g less than or equal to chi d so what i want to do i want to give a dominating set with cardinality chi d so what you do is you take a chi d partition from every color class you pick up one vertex okay so i have a chi d partition from every color class i am picking up a vertex so say this is one color class this is another color class okay say so i have like this so from this i choose one x1 and uh, so i choose a representative from each color class from this i choose x2 
from this i choose x3 and so on okay so you take this set x1 x2 x3 etc i want to say that this is a dominating set okay so you have a representative from every color class but this is a chi partition so take any vertex v being a chi partition that v is adjacent to at least one color class okay say suppose if v is adjacent to the color class capital vi my set will have a representative from that vi namely xi so this v will be adjacent to that xi so in this way every vertex will be adjacent to and the coordinate of the set is chi d because from every color class you have taken a representative so i am able to give a dominating set with cardinality chi d but i don't know whether it is minimum or not so you have gamma less than or equal to chi d okay coming to the upper bound you take any proper coloring so i have used chi of g colors okay in the graph choose a dominating set and you recolor the vertices in the dominating set by coloring each vertex by a new color so already you have used chi colors now you take a dominating set recolor every vertex of the dominating set using a new color so now i would have used chi plus gamma colors i want to show that this coloring is a chi d coloring so you have a dominating set there and all the vertices of the dominating set are now singleton color classes because you have recolored every vertex using a single color so whatever vertex you take outside this is a dominating set so that will be adjacent to at least one vertex here and that is a singleton color class so it is a dominator partition okay so this gives an upper bound again you have two problems here characterizing graphs with chi equal to chi d with gamma equal to chi d and the upper bound okay and uh, both the bounds are sharp and for lower bound the sharpness is given by complete bipartite graph because for complete bipartite graph chi is 2 gamma is 2 and chi d is also 2 and for upper bound you have even cycles so for n greater than or equal to 8 okay so that is for the upper bound and then here you have that if g is a connected graph and if gamma is 1 that is you have one vertex which is adjacent to every other vertex okay you want to show that chi equal to chi d that is every proper coloring is again a dominator coloring because gamma is 1 so there is one vertex which is adjacent to all the other vertices definitely the color that i have used for that one vertex cannot be used for any other vertex so that single vertex is a single thin color class so that will take care of the dominator property so the remaining vertices you find the chromatic coloring that is chi of g minus b for the remaining graph so kind of g minus v plus 1 will be a dominator pattern so both chi and chi d are equal and so you have a realization theorem that is whenever you have suppose if chi less than or equal to c so whatever two numbers i take the first one less than or equal to the second one i need a graph for which chi is equal to the first number and chi d is equal to the second number such theorems are called as realization theorems so here you have one type of realization if you take a pair 1 a with 1 less than or equal to a okay so i get a graph g with gamma equal to 1 and chi d as well as chi d both of them are equal to a what you do is you take a complete graph and at attach as many pendants in a vertex as you have the remaining things are pendants so you take a ka and remaining pendants n minus a 
at one vertex the pendants are attached at one vertex so you have one vertex which is adjacent to all the other vertices so gamma is one okay and inside you have okay inside you have a complete graph so i need as many colors as i have for that complete graph and the remaining things the pendants can be colored using <coughs> any one of the colors that i have not used for the support and you can see that this is a dominator coloring so both chi as well as chi d both of them are equal to a so you take a k a that is a complete graph on a vertices attach pendants at one vertex of k a and this is a more general theorem but it is a very lengthier construction i don't give that construction and of course this is again simple you take any graph with delta equal to 1 so you have chi d strictly greater than gamma because minimum degree is 1 so you have pendants as well as supports okay so suppose if you take your any any chi d partition so let me have any support in a chi d partition any support should be ascending because the corresponding pendant will be adjacent to only that vertex so the color that you have used for the support cannot be used for any other vertex so all my supports are singletons and let me take all the pendant vertices as one color class okay now i choose a representative from all the all the color classes except the color class containing the leaves so chi d is strictly greater than gamma okay and of course this is uh people had a feeling that this um, number may be very ma small something like yes ma um uh, okay ma'am okay video is now yes, clear ma in between video is not visible ma'am uh, presentation screen is not visible uh. presentation screen is not visible uh, yes ma'am in uh. now okay in uh, is it visible uh, no ma'am not visible ma okay 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 i'll share again then okay okay in between a video uh, was uh, not visible ma'am oh 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 okay okay now is it visible uh, okay ma'am okay ma'am it's clear clear ma'am uh, okay, okay. Uh, so people had a feeling that this number may be okay maybe uh, maybe very very little difference between this number and this chromatic number but myselski he gave a construction so that this number may be as large so let me move on to my second parameter this is a small variant of this dominator coloring you know global domination so global domination is defined as a, a set of vertices it should be a dominating set for both g as well as its complement okay so it is a dominating set for g and g bar so motivated by this shahul hamid and rajeshwari they combined dominator coloring together with its global concept and defined a global dominator coloring so rajeshwari did her phd in this parameter so what you do is you take a dominator vertex so it should be adjacent to every vertex in s you define its anti concept so your vertex v is said to be an anti dominator of s if v is not adjacent to any vertex of s okay so v is a dominator of a set s if it is adjacent to every vertex in s and it is an anti dominator of s if it is not adjacent to any vertex of s and your condition is you want to find out the minimum number of colors such that every vertex okay has a color class dom color class and an anti dom color class so what my condition is for every vertex of the graph vertex should be adjacent to 
all the vertices of one color class so another color class okay. so you need to find out such things so the minimum number of colors for this with this property that is called as global dominator chromatic number and it is denoted by chi gd so it is a natural gen generalization of global domination so if you look at this graph you can see that for this the chromatic number is 2 and being a bi star in fact this should not be this is not 2 it should be 3 so you can see that any proper coloring using two word colors that is not a dominator coloring so you need three colors for that okay so for chi d it is three but if you color it using three colors so my graph is like this so i have this graph so suppose if i color it like this so i use color 1 for this vertex color 2 for this vertex and all the pendants i use color 3 so i use color 3 for all the pendant vertices so this is a dominator coloring but you can see that it is not global because if you look at vertex 1 it has a dom color class that is singleton 2 it is adjacent to all the vertices of this color class so it has dom color class as 2 but it has no anti dom color class that is it is it should not be adjacent to all the vertices of another color class but you don't have such a color class because if you look at color class containing 3 it is adjacent to two vertices of that color class so it is not a do global dominating coloring so what you do is instead of giving color 3 here you give four so i need one more color now i can see that one is not adjacent to any vertex of color 3 so the color class 3 forms an anti dom color class for one okay and for three one is an anti dom color class the other way and coloring so my number is 4 so for this graph a very simple graph chi is 2 chi d is 3 and chi g d is 4 so naturally this chi g d is imposing one more condition to chi d so definitely chi d is less than or equal to chi g d okay and if you take a connected graph with chi d greater than or equal to this one then i can see that both of them are equal because what you have is this is the maximum degree okay so take a chi d partition so i have at least delta plus two color classes there and you can see that if i take whatever vertex b i take definitely it can be adjacent to at most delta other vertices because the maximum degree is delta so even if it is adjacent to delta color classes so it is in one color class it is adjacent to delta of g other classes so only delta of g plus one color classes are carried out so you have one more color class left so this vertex will not be adjacent to any vertex of that color class so it has an anti dom color class so every vertex has a dom color class as well as an anti dom color class so this shows that this two things are equal any dominator partition will be a global dominator partition and coming to the peterson graph peterson graph comes under this category because you can see that the maximum degree delta is 3 for peterson graph it is a three regular graph okay. and you can see that chi d is 5 okay so chi d is greater than or equal to 3 plus 2 that is 5 so peterson graph satisfies this condition so i can see that for peterson graph global dominator color number as well as usual dominator both of them are equal to 5 the finding global dominator number it is of course a bit difficult than finding chi d and you can see that chi d of g is 2 if and only if g is a to b 
know how much time i can take ma me know actually uh, it's uh, scheduled till uh, shall i conclude then ah uh, okay ma'am it's actually it's scheduled till till 10:30 ma'am ah uh. okay okay then i shall go to the references because i have something more okay ma'am so let me go to the of course i'll be introducing only one more parameter but no problem the definition i have given in the initial thing itself in the beginning itself so these are some open problems so in the due course of my lecture itself i have mentioned some so you have many few more actually this is a new area that is connecting domination and coloring okay so whatever parameter you take you can do lot of things using that and for the reference and this is another parameter called min dom color number this is the other way of taking that dom color number instead of taking maximum you take minimum and you have defined min dom color number and this is the base paper by era that is on dominator coloring in graphs okay that is the base paper of course these two things these two things are the base papers so uh, thank you thank you everyone So now, if you have any questions, you can just ask. Uh, sir, Suresh Singh, sir. Good morning, sir. Sorry, ma'am. It's down. Yes, ma'am. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah. You have any question? No, ma'am. Okay. I think no questions. Ma'am, chat also is there. There are no questions. Okay, okay. Then shall I stop? Okay, ma'am. Okay. Sure. One. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you for speaking. Ah, thank you, ma. Thank you, Mano. <laughs> so, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so, thank you, sir. Uh, thanks, everyone. Thank you for accepting our invitation, ma'am. We are moving to the vote of thanks section, ma'am. Okay. okay. Now, I invite Dana Jayaraj of Second PG Mathematics for the vote of thanks. It's such an honor for me to get the opportunity to thank you, Dr. Palama, on behalf of my college and department. I extend a hearty vote of thanks for taking out time from your busy schedule to provide us with such a valuable information. Thank you so much, ma'am. I'm so happy that I'm so happy that we had the great opportunity to hear your lecture. Graph coloring is really an interesting area in graph theory. Ma'am, your class was really helpful. Ma'am, your class was really helpful, especially for a second PG student. Uh, we have graph theory to study this sem in a third sem, uh, and uh, it was so helpful that we came to know more about it. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you for such an informative and interesting talk. Thank you. Thank you. Now. we move on to the next session of our program paper presentation i invite ms anju ma'am the faculty of our college to invite and introduce dr g suresh singh who will chair the session before that kala madam it's my pleasure yes, to invite yeah. such an uh, eminent uh, professor time, dr wait, wait. g suresh singh uh, please please wait uh, at that time i was in a muted position that's why i could no problem uh, Okay, madam. Huh? How are you? Uh, fine, sir. Fine, sir. O okay. <laughs> Happy to see you <laughs> in online mode. Long time since I heard from you. After a long period, huh? <laughs> yeah, yes, yeah, sir. Yeah. If time permits, we will see you. 
ఓకే మేడం ఓకే ఓకే థాంక్యూ సార్ ఓకే ప్లీజ్ కంటిన్యూ ఓకే గుడ్ మార్నింగ్ ఆల్ ఇట్స్ మై ప్లెషర్ టు ఇన్వైట్ సచ్ అన్ ఎమినెంట్ ప్రొఫెసర్ డాక్టర్ జి సురేష్ సింగ్ ఇట్ ఈస్ నెసెసరీ టు సే సంథింగ్ అబౌట్ హిమ్ బిఫోర్ స్టార్టింగ్ అవర్ సెషన్ హీ ఈస్ వర్కింగ్ అట్ కేరళ యూనివర్సిటీ అండ్ వాస్ అవార్డెడ్ ఐఎంఆర్ ఆఫ్ ఎక్సలెన్స్ అవార్డ్ భారత్ గౌరవ్ అవార్డ్ అండ్ గ్లోరీ ఆఫ్ ఇండియా గోల్డ్ మెడల్ he published a book and has more than 50 publications he is also a member of editorial board of many journals and edited six books graph theory coding theory and cryptography are some of his research areas he guided more than 15 research scholars and was board of studies member of many universities and colleges on behalf of fatima mata national college i invite you sir to chair this session okay thank you please and the organizers if you wish to give any instruction to the paper presenters please do it in the session the presentation will be on the following order dm 210 208 203 204 205 206 participants please note that you will be given a total of 10 minutes 8 minutes for presentation and 2 minutes for discussion please ensure that you are well prepared and familiar with the pro- platform uh, before your presentation to avoid unnecessary time lag and also not that when you are using mobile phones for your presentation you are put in the landscape mode thank you now we are starting uh, we are getting started Suresh sir, can we start? Yes, please call. Okay. call the, first the first register number is DM210. The first register number is DM210. We will rang a bell at the 8 minutes. Okay. DM210, you can start now. Yes, ma'am. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yeah. Yeah, please continue. Please okay. say, uh, share your screen. Okay, sir. I'm Mahalakshmi, pursuing second MSc Max in SDD Women's College, Manapuri. Today, I'm going to do the presentation on a topic of a comparative study on a fuzzy graph and a network analysis. Here is an abstract following on some of the keywords. introduction long as to prog problem in network analysis provide an important functional method for planning and managing good project in a architecture medical medical and the different sectors here we are in 210 your screen yes, excuse is me please uh, share your screen first then continue sir mahalakshmi please share your screen first your screen is not visible yeah sir ah, now it's okay please go okay, okay you shall proceed okay sir calculation of traditional digital algorithm has been commonly used to used in the shortest shortest path problem in that it is one of the most referenced in this paper traditional power compared to the modified digital algorithm and calculate the earliest and the latest time we are comparing the power and the modified digital algorithm on finding the critical power here is the power power is a basic method which draw its prediction based on even probabilities it is a beta distribution system for power uh, with beta distribution three estimates of time are used to determine the parameter of length of activity distribution first one is pessimistic time ta uh, assuming everything goes wrong most likely time tm assuming everything proceed as a normal optimistic time tb assuming every process uh, better than the normally expected the expected time mean equal to ta plus 4 tm plus tb by 6 next one is dixter algorithm dixter algorithm based on finding a minimum weight path in a weighted graph connecting to two given vertices 
Text algorithm that can be used in many fields such as telecommunication, ta cable networks, telephone networks, power supply networks, gas pipe networks, water supply network, railway, etc. To determine the shortest path between two or more than two cities. In this paper, I modified digital algorithm. Uh, so the forward and backward pass algorithm are given here. Forward pass algorithm. Step one. In the sequence, V1 equal to 1, V2 equal to 2, Vn equal to N. Allocate N vertices. Step two. Uh, assigning permanent label 0 to the permanent vertex V1 equal to 1 and provisional label 0 to the rest of N minus 1 edges. Step 3. Every vertex J is not permanently labeled would receive a new provisional label that is EJ equal to maximum of odd label of J comma odd label of I plus TIJ where I is a permanently labeled with the new vertex and the TIJ is a duration of activity between the vertex BI I and the J if an edge is not connected, so I, uh, I and J, so T I J equal to 1. The next uh, step 4 is the next vertex turn into the fixed label. Step 4 and step 3 repeated until V n equal to N get fixed label. The A J is permanently label values are the earliest time to T1 equal to 0. Backward process. Step 1, set N vertices to Vn equal to N and Vn minus 1 equal to N minus 1 and so on, V1 equal to 1. Step 2, allocate fixed label Ln equal to En to the fixed to the vertex L, uh, Vn equal to N and temporary labeled uh, remains N minus 1. Step 3, any node J does not Lj equal to minimum of old label of I comma old label of j plus taj where j is a fixed label with the new vertex taj is the duration of activity among the vertex i and j if an edge is not connected to i and j then taj equal to zero step four as per step one the next vertex will be fixed label or permanent label repeated step three and four until the initial vertex b1 get fixed Now we are moving to the to solve the problem. Before that, the forward pass we are using earliest time ES and activity can start earliest. ES equal to maximum EF of the immediate predecessor. Earliest finish time EF equal to the earliest time an activity can be finished. EF equal to ES plus activity time. For back, backward pass, uh, latest start time LS, the latest start time in the system that, uh, that a process will begin without creating a delay. LS equal to LF minus T. Latest finish time LF is equal to a latest finish in the system. That is a process will end without creating any delay. Here is a problem. There are 10 activities are given. For each activity, the predecessor, pessimistic time TA, most likely time TM, optimistic time TB are given in the problem. We need to find the expected time. That is mean using the formula TA plus 4 TM plus TB by 6. For the first activity, 1 to 2, TA equal to 5, TM equal to 6, TB equal to 7. So we can calculate the, uh, the this using the formula expected time uh, 5 plus 4 into 6 plus 7 is equal to 36 divided by 6 is equal to 6. For all activity, uh, we can uh, use this formula to find the expected time ET. Using the table, we are moved to the next network for example. For activity 1 to 2, the expected time is 6. For activity 1 to 3, the expected time is 3. For activity 1 to 4, the expected time is 4. For activity 2 to 5, the expected time is 2. 3 to 6, the expected time is 3. 4 to 6, expected time is 5. 4 to 7, expected time is 3. And 6 to 7, the expected time is 5. 5 to 8, the expected time is 5. 7 to 8, the expected time is 3. From node 1, we are starting. So the earliest start 0 for the starting node 1 and the ending node 2. From 1 to 2, uh, we fixing 0 as a start, uh, earliest start for 1. 0 plus 6 is equal to 6. For uh, activity 1 to 3, 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. For activity 1 to 4, 0 plus 4 equal to 4. Like that, 2 to 5, 6 plus 2 is equal to 8, 4 to 6, 
Here uh, for six, there are two activities are given, three to six and four to six. We want to find the maximum of this. Three, three plus three is equal to six, but four plus, four plus five is equal to nine. We want to take a nine as a maximum. E is equal to nine. Like that, we want to calculate the E uh, S for all this. L F equal to seventeen, and we uh, we take L S equal to E F. We taking the backward first. Uh, from uh, last, we take seventeen. We want to subtract each uh, expected variance, expected time to L F two next L F. Five to eight. Uh, seventeen minus five equal to twelve. Like that, seventeen minus three equal to fourteen. For four, there are two vertex six and seven. For six, uh, fourteen minus five equal to nine. Here nine minus five equal to four. Fourteen minus three equal to eleven. But we want to take a minimum value. For so nine minus five equal to four. At the last, as one, one, two, two, three, uh, two, one, two, two, one, two, three, one, two, four. We taking ten minus six equal to four. Six minus three equal to three. Four minus four equal to zero. But uh, we want to take a minimum value. So four minus four equal to zero. We calculated the critical path. We uh, we have we want to find the critical path. To find the critical path, the node having the same E S and E L F, which uh, the node one, four, six, seven, and eight having the same value as zero, four, nine, fourteen, and seventeen. This is the critical path. The critical path is one to four, four to six, six to seven, and a seven to eight. Therefore, the completion of the project duration is seventeen. The activity time and the modified Dijkstra algorithm. Here we propose the method to find the project completion duration using a step one and a step two. Excuse me, DM two one zero. Your time is over. Now it's a time for discussion. Please conclude. Okay, ma'am. Using the modified Dijkstra algorithm, we uh, we have take we have received the same completion duration is seventeen. We can uh, have this uh, the in fact also we have we can have the, the completion duration seventeen modified Dijkstra algorithm also we have completed as seventeen. This paper gives the same calculation in third method and modified Dijkstra algorithm, so we can easily apply to the network problem to find the project completion duration time or longest path in a network diagram. Here are my references. Thank you. Suresh, do you have something to share? Yeah, yeah. My name is Me. Yes, sir. Ah, uh, your topic is a comparative study on fuzzy graph and network analysis. But yes, you sir. have done something on Perth CPM with the digistras and the modified digistras. No fuzzy graph is given. No comparison is given. Try to give something uh, related to your topic in the next event onwards. Okay. Okay, sir. Ah, okay. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Call the next person. Next register number is DM two one zero. DM two one zero. Your time starts now. DM two not eight, you may start now. Yes. Am I audible? Yes. Please proceed. Share your screen first, then proceed. Yes. Can 
can you see the screen? Uh, please do it. Just can you see the screen, sir? Just you have started to. Hmm. Your, uh, ah, now it's okay. okay. If it possible, uh, give the entire screen. Otherwise, go. Yeah. Okay, fine. Good morning, everyone. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, myself, Yashna Modi. I'm assistant professor at Paris University. This paper is co-authored by Mr. Bharat Sudhar, Mr. Uh, Subodh Sharma. Uh, they are also the assistant professor at Paris University. So today, uh, my topic is Rainbow Vertex Connection, number of book-related graphs. Uh, the outline for today is abstract, introduction, definitions, main results, conclusion, and wrap ups. Furthermore, the abstract, a rainbow, uh, a rainbow coloring of connected graph is coloring the vertex of graph such that every pair of vertices is connected by at least one path in which no two vertices are colored the same. In this paper, we investigate the rainbow vertex connection number of book related graphs. The introduction, the graph is connected, finite and undirect graph. A graph G, B of G, E, G, having set of vertices B, G and set of edges E, G respectively. We refer gross and yellow for all the all kind of definitions and notations. So uh, here are the definitions. Definition one, in correct connected graph G, the distance between two of its vertices B, I and B, J is the length of the shortest path between them. It is denoted by distance VI and VG. Definition 2. Uh, the eccentricity of a vertices V is given by the maximum distance from the vertices V to the VI. Definition 3. The graph G vertex V belongs to VG is called center if the eccentricity is minimum. Definition 4. Uh, the maximum of the eccentricity is called the uh, diameter of the graph. Definition 5. A path is called rainbow vertex path if all the vertices in the path have distinct colors. Definition 6. And vertex colored graph G is called rainbow connected if any two vertices are connected by rainbow vertex path. Uh, so here, rainbow connection number has applications in transferring informations of high security in multi-computer networks we refer uh, the uh, we uh, refer the reference papers 5 and 6 which are given the rainbow vertex connection number of graph denoted by rvc g is the smallest number of colors that are needed in order to make graph g rainbow vertex connected uh, the lower bound of the rainbow vertex connect, uh, connection is defined by diameter of g minus 1 in this paper, we focus on rainbow vertex connection number of book related graphs. This is the definition for a rectangular book. One edge union of cycles of same length is called a book. The common edge here V1 and V2 are called the base of the book and uh, this T are the copies. We are changing the copies into the theorem. If we consider T copies of cycles of length n, then the book is denoted by B and T. It has n minus 2T plus 2 vertices and n minus 1T plus 1 edges. Uh, we, are taking, uh, we are taking n as 4, so our book will be of rectangular book with rectangular pages. Theorem. If B4T is a rectangular book graph, then RVC is B, uh, RBC of B4T is given by N minus 2. Here we have taken the example uh, with uh, example of B4 3 where three copies are taken. So uh, the uh, to uh, form the RBC we need at least two colors uh, C1 and C2. Pick any two vertices and you will get the path in which the all the vertices are colored with different color. Definition 8. 
let pn plus nn be the graph with modulus of v is equal to 2n and modulus of e is equal to 3n minus 1 so that v union e is 5n minus 1 v of pn plus nn is equal to v1 v2 vn u1 u2 up to un where n we have taken as even v of pn is equal to v1 v2 vn and v of nn is equal to u1 u2 and un so uh, this pn is this base of the book v1 v2 v3 and v4 you can take it as a spiral book uh, and uh, nn are the copies u1 u2 u3 and u4 so the e of pn plus nn is equal to e of pn union v1 u1 v1 u2 v1 un vn u1 vn u2 and vn un the theorem is as follows rainbow vertex connection number of pn plus nn graph of a path pn is given by n by 2 plus 1 where n we have taken as e1 and greater than or equal to 3 here we have taken the example of pn plus p6 plus n6 where uh, this uh, the base water base vertices are 6 and the copies are also 6 for that uh, to uh, to do the rainbow vertex coloring we need at least four colors such that when we pick any two vertices uh, the path in between will contain uh, the path in between uh, contain vertices are colored different definition 9 let pn plus nn be the graph with modulus of v is equal to 2n and modulus of e is equal to 3n minus 1 so that v union e is equal to 5n minus 1 where p v of pn plus nn is equal to v1 v2 vn up, uh, u1 u2 up to un where n is odd v of pn is equal to v1 v2 vn and v of nn is equal to u1 u2 un uh, here is the example here we have taken n as odd so in the base vertices there are three uh, three vertices and the copies are also three the theorem is rainbow vertex connection number of pn plus nn graph of a path pn is n minus 1 divided by 2 where n is odd and greater than or equal to 3 rainbow vertex connection number of 5n uh, P5 plus N5 graph of a path P5 is 2. That is, we need at least two colors to make RVC, uh, RVC of the given graph. Pick any two vertices and you will get the path which contains the, uh, 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 of which the vertices contain different colors. Conclusion, the rainbow vertex connection and rainbow coloring of book related graphs has been defined and using it we have computed the rainbow connection and uh, rainbow vertex connection number. Here are the reference we have used so far. Thank you. Okay. Akinamudi, you have presented only PN plus N, NN. That's a particular uh, structure of graphs. Do you have any result for an arbitrary graph related on vertex connection number? No, sir. We have taken particular graph you, which we have taken as rectangular book and as well as the spiral book. And you have no more. And do you have any idea about rainbow domination? No, sir. Okay. It's okay. Thank you. Please call the next person. Next test number is DM203. DM203. Hello, ma'am. I'm audible. Yes, yes, you are. First, share your screen, then you may start. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, proceed. Good morning to one and all present here. Myself, B. Narmada from First MSc Mathematics in INR Janagamal College, Sivagasi, Tamil Nadu, India. 
So my topic is on the Gaussian integer solution for an elliptic diaphragm equation 34 J square plus 751 K square minus 304 J K equal to 1296. So some introduction about uh, diaphragm equation. A yeah, diaphragm equation is nothing but the equation. It have two or more unknowns. The solution of the equation are only in, in integer form. But in another direction, we seek Gaussian integer solution for diaphragm equation. On account of that, we are considering a elliptic diaphragm equation 34 j square plus 71 k square minus 304 j k equal to 1296. To do so, we enter on linear transformation by the equation. So, this is the geometrical view for my uh, elliptic diaphragm equation. Um, next. Next, I consider the diaphragm equation. Uh, this equation is, uh, this it is complicated to solve and to find the nature and the properties of the solution of solution. So, uh, to make com computation easier, we define a linear transformation. The linear transformation D equal to J equal to HX plus IY and K equal to X plus I KY. Here, XY, HK belongs to integers. So, I apply this P, uh, this linear transformation in my diaphragm equation, uh, I get some equation formation. Uh, next, I equating the coefficient of y squared to uh, least integer, I get k value equal to 2. And uh, I equating the imaginary part to 0 uh, and substitute the, that k value uh, 2 in that equation, I get h equal to 5. So my j and k value equal to 5x plus iy and k x plus 2iy. So sub apply this j k value in my given diaphragm equation. Um, I obtain the Bell equation in this formation x square minus 30 y square equal to 16. Uh, next I find the solution for that Bell's equation. Uh, so I include some preliminaries for that. Uh, first I include the continuous fraction expansion for root t uh, and um, minimal, I find a minimal solution for that. Uh, if, if let pk divided by qk be the kth convergent of simple continuous fraction of root t, then p, p1 divided by q1 equal to a0 plus 1 by a1 and p2 divided by q2 equal to a0 plus 1 divided by a1 plus 1 by a2 and k given are equal to 3 pk divided by qk in this form. So if uh, let p be a positive integer that is not a perfect square. Let p k divided by q k be the kth convergent of the simple continuous fraction of root t. Uh, let n be the period of length of continuous fraction. If my n is even, my positive solution of x squared minus t y squared equal to 1 and x, x equal to y equal to in this form p j n minus 1 and y equal to q j n minus 1. If my n is r, the positive solution of x square minus t y square equal to 1 r, x equal to p 2 j n minus 1 and y equal to q 2 j 2 j n minus 1. Uh, first, I find the fundamental solution of x square minus t y square equal to 1. Then I generate the other solution by using the diff definition. Thus, we define x and y n by the relation x naught plus y naught root t the whole power n equal to x n plus y n root t. Uh, First, I prove one theorem for this. Uh, let D, uh, that Bell's equation, uh, the continuous fraction of root 30 is uh, 5 to 10. Uh, next, the minimal solution of x squared minus 30 y squared equal to 1. Uh, here, I find the minimal solution I using the preliminaries. For n greater than or equal to 2, my relation is un equal to level un minus 1 plus 60 vn minus 1 and vn equal to 2 un minus 1 plus 7 vn minus 1. I using the preliminary equalities. That means un plus vn root 30 equal to un plus uh, root 30 v1 the whole power n for n greater than or equal to 2. In other words, I represent in this matrix form. Uh, if I give n equal to 2, I get some relation and uh, uh, apply for this uh, n terms. Next, for n greater than or equal to 4, un and vn in this form, un equal to 23 un minus 1 minus un minus 2 plus un minus 3 and vn equal to 23 vn minus 1 vn minus 2 plus uh, vn minus 3. Here, I using induction method on this. Uh, first, uh, here I find uh, this relation, fourth 
fourth condition this relation is too far uh, uh, four and i assume that this relation is too far n minus one condition next i prove this this is too far n so this is uh, this is the solution for x square minus 30 y square equal to 1 using this next i indicate the integral solution of x square minus 30 y square equal to 16 by by the solution of this format x and my x and comma y n so next theorem is define a sequence x and comma y n of positive integers right uh, x1 comma y1 equal to 44 comma 8 this is the solution of x squared minus 30 y squared equal to 16 uh, next xn comma yn equal to 44 un minus 1 plus 240 vn minus 1 and the yn equal to 44 un minus 1 plus 240 vn minus 1 where un vn is a sequence of positive solution of x squared minus 30 y squared equal to 1 uh, next, um, xn comma yn is a solution of x square minus 30 y square equal to 16 for any integer n greater than or equal to 1. Here, uh, it is easily seen that x1 y1 equal to 44 comma 8. Uh, here, um, my first, uh, in the above theorem, I prove x square minus 30 y square equal to 1. That solution of the format level comma 2. Here, uh, my so, uh, my equation is x square minus 30 y square equal to 16. So, the solution of the format uh, x1 comma y1 equal to 44 comma 8. This, this is satisfied. Next. Oh, okay. uh, Try to conclude. Uh, the time is. Uh... Okay, sir. So n greater than or equal to 2 x n plus uh, x n plus uh, the above theorem I used with this. Uh, for n greater than or equal to 4 x n equal to 23 x n minus 1 minus x n minus 2 plus x n minus 3 and y n equal to 23 y n minus 1 minus y n minus 2 plus y n minus 3. So this here I use inverse inverse transformation uh, um, d bar to d by using inverse of d. So we have the main theorem, d be the Diophantine equation in one, then the primary solution of d is j1 k1 equal to 2, uh, 2, 2, 0 plus 8i, 44 plus 16i. Here I substitute, uh, we already uh, say that in uh, j, jn equal to kn in this form, that means j equal to 5x plus i y on that form. So substitute x1 and y1 value in this, I get j1 k1 primary solution in this form. Next, define a sequence, sequence j n k n, n greater than or equal to 1 equal to 5 x n plus i y n, x n plus i 2 y n, where x n and y n discussed in the above equation. So in that case, j n k n is a solution of D. The solution j n k n is satisfied, that means j n equal to in this form. Here, I also used uh, induction method on this. Um, Using, using in above theorem. So jn equal to 5 level xn minus 1 plus 60 yn minus 1 plus 2 xn minus 1 plus level yn minus 1 and kn in this form. So next final step, final subdivision is the solution jn kn convince the recurrence association. So the jn equal to 115 xn minus 1 minus xn minus 2 plus 5 xn minus 3 plus i 23 yn minus 1 minus yn minus 2 plus yn minus 3 for n greater than or equal to 2 and kn in this form. So finally, conclusion, Diophantine uh, equation are wealthy in diversity. There is no common technique to discover all feasible causal integer solution if it exceeds for Diophantine equations. This method looks to be double free, but actually it is extremely complex for attainment of solution. One may search for other choices of Diophantine equation to find their corresponding causal integer solution. So these are my reference. Uh, so thank you. Okay, Narmada, you are a first year PG student, huh? Eh? Uh, right? uh, okay. uh, Actually, I appreciate your effort. Huh? Thank you, for sir. Thank such you. a paper. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Next register number is DM204. DM204. Good morning. Am I audible, sir? Yeah, you are audible. Please share your screen. Okay. Respected share person, sir. Is it my screen visible, sir? Yeah, now it's visible. You, you shall proceed. Okay. Respected share person, sir. Uh, respected uh, professor.
professor and scholars. The title of my paper is Unitary Division Maximum Function. Myself, uh, Pavesh Das, Assistant Professor of Department of Mathematics, at the Vidyavit College, Assam. So first, uh, into the abstract section, uh, we have defined what we have done in this paper. We have uh, defined a maximum function associated with the, uh, with the divisor function, sigma star of n. Sigma star of n denotes the sum of all uh, unitary divisors of a number n. We define the maximum function u star of n equal to max k belongs to n such that sigma star of k divides n. We study the function u star of n for the prime of the form p of the number of the form n equal to p power of m where p is a prime and m greater than equal to one. So first we define some uh, preliminary definition. So a function f is said to be a arithmetic function uh, if domain is a set of natural number all of you all of we know. So if f is a arithmetic function with property that is n belongs to uh, n belongs to n there exists at least one uh, k belongs to n, n such that n divides f of k, then f of n equal to minimum k belongs to n such that n divides f of k. So these functions uh, generalize some particular functions. For example, if we take f of k equal to factorial n, then one gets well-known summary function. Well, if, if, uh, if we take f of k equal to k into k plus one by two, one is the pseudo summary function. Similarly, uh, if z is an arithmetic function, then maximum function is defined in that way, capital Z of n equal to max k belongs to n such that z of k divides n. So dual of this fu summary function is defined for z of k equal to factorial n, z of k equal to k to k plus one by two, one gets the dual pseudo summary function. So these two functions are defined by uh, Sandor, Joseph uh, Sandor in reference to n three. So we have defined using the notion of uh, maximum function, summary function and dual summary function, uh, we have in investigated uh, the maximum function associated with the unitary divisor function sigma star of n. So what is a uh, unitary divisor function? If a positive integer d is called a unitary divisor of n, if d divides n and GCD of d and n by d equal to always one. So unitary divisor function is denoted by sigma star of n and is the sum of all positive divisors of n. So here are the uh, main result section. So if, if star of n equal to, we have defined max k belongs to n such that sigma star of k divides n. So this is equation 2.1. So lemma 2.1, we have obtained that sigma star of n always greater than equal to one plus n power of one by r whole to the power r always greater than equal to one plus n. So this is the proof. Lemma 2.2, if P be a prime number, if we want to solve the equation sigma star of x equal to, sigma star of x equal to P has solution if and only if P is a permit prime. Let Lemma 2.3, let P be a prime, then sigma star of x equal to P square has solution if and only if P equal to two or, or P equal to three and solutions are x equal to three or x equal to eight. Lemma 2.4, let P be a prime number, then solution, then the equation sigma star x equal to P cube has solution if and only if P equal to two, and the only solution is in that case is x equal to seven. Lemma 2.5, let K greater than one be any integer, the equation sigma star of x equal to two power of K is always solvable and its solutions are of the form x equal to Marcin prime or x equal to product of all Marcin primes, product of distinct Marcin primes. Lemma 2.6, let P be a prime and K greater than two be any integer, then the equation sigma star of X equal to P power of K has solution only for P equal to two. So we have obtained the following results, proposition 2.7, for all N greater than one, sigma star of U star of N always less than equal to N, proposition 2.8, for all N greater than equal to two, U star of N always less than equal to N minus one. Proposition 2.9, if P be a prime and alpha greater than equal to one, then U star of uh, p power of alpha plus one always equal to p power of alpha. Proposition 2.10, for i goes from one to r, let p i be distinct primes, then if n is be a uh, positive integer such that one plus p one of alpha one into one plus p two of alpha two up to one plus p r alpha r divides n, where alpha i get an equal to one, then you start of n always get an equal to p one alpha one, p two alpha two dot 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 p r alpha r. Proposition 2.11, for any prime p, u star of p equal to, we can write two power of m, if p is, is a Fermat prime, that is the form of the p is two power of m plus one, 
and you start of p equal to one if p equal to two or p is not a Hermit prime. Proposition 2.12 for any prime p, you start of p square equal to three if p equal to two, eight if p equal to three, uh, and uh, two part of m if p is a uh, Hermit prime greater than three. And you, you start of p square equal to one otherwise. Proposition 2.13 for any prime p, you start of p k equal to seven if p equal to two, eight if p equal to three, and two part of m if p is a Fermat prime greater than one, and you, you start of pq equal to one otherwise. 2.14, proposition 2.14, you start of two part of t equal to z, where z is the product of, of this, of, uh, product, z is the greatest product, two part of p1 minus one, two part of p2 minus one, up to two part of pn minus one of Marcin primes, where p1 plus p2 dot 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 pr less than equal to t. So here is an example, uh, 2.1, for n equal to, if we take two part of eight, then p1 plus p2 up to pr equal to eight. So then we get p1 equal to three, p2 equal to five. So therefore z is in that case is uh, uh, 217. That means if we consider u star of two part of eight, so this equal to always 217. Proposition 2.15, <coughs> for any prime p and k greater than three, u star of p power of k is z if p equal to two, u star of p power of k equal to eight if p equal to three, u star of pk equal to two part of m if uh, p is a Fermat prime, and u star of pk equal to one otherwise. Here, here z is z is uh, of, is given in the proposition 2.1. So here is a corollary we have obtained uh, 2.16. For any positive integer a greater than equal to one, we have u star of seven power of a is always one. U star of 11, uh, 11 power of a equal to one, u star of 13 power of a equal to one, u star of 19 power of a equal to one, etc. Corollary 2.17, for a greater than equal to one, any number of the form n equal to two power of m plus one into two power of a minus a whole to the power a, u star of n equal to two power of l, for some, uh, some integer l, where two power of m plus one is Fermat prime and two power of p minus one is Marcin prime. So there are some example, u star of, U star of 35 equal to 2 square, U star of uh, 51 equal to, we can write to, uh, U star of 51 equal to 2 power of 4, U star of 7967 7 equal to, equal to, we'll obtain 2, uh, two power of 8, etc. So these uh, propositions are proved by using the lemma. So far, I have mentioned. mentioned. So, so far, we have developed uh, uh, these results, and these are the references uh, from where I have uh, taken the definition of uh, unitary divisor functions and and, and maximum function. Thank you. Okay, Dr. Babesh. Yes, sir. Uh, normally, the set of all arithmetic functions will form a group. What about your unitary divisor function? Are they to form a group or not? So, sir, uh, if we consider the number six, then uh, the unitary divisors are one, two, uh, one, two, three, and six. And uh, unitary divisors uh, will not form a group, sir. Oh, that's right. yeah okay. Whether it is multiplicative, so divisor. Yes, sir. That function is multiplicative. Multiplicative. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Please call the next person. Next register number is DM two not five. DM two not five. Am I audible, sir? Yes, you are audible. Please share your screen and continue. Uh, good morning to all. Uh, myself, Parasatha, uh, and I'm from Vadodara, and I am as a assistant professor of applied science and immunities of Pharma University of Vadodara. Uh, today, my present, uh, presentation of title is Prime Labeling on some graph. This is the outline of my presentations. Is it visible, sir? Yes, please. This is the outline of my presentations, uh, abstract introduction, definitions, manager, conclusion, and reference. Uh, the abstract of this uh, title of a vertex prime labeling of a graph G uh, with vertex VG in an injective function with the uh, vertices are mapping with one to V for each E, U, V, F of U, comma, F of V are prime. A graph which admits a vertex prime labeling is called vertex prime. In this paper, we are investigating the prime labeling on C and the corona of K1 graph. And this is the Y of and T of graph, triangular snake graph, and triple triangular snake graph. 
the introductions of this uh, all the following graph are we are taking the finite simple and undirected graph vertex set and a set is denoted by vg and is respectively we all know that the graph theory has application in many other field of study including physics chemistry biology economics engineering operations research and uh, especially computer science in a graph labeling various type of labeling method can be used the reference of one for all standard notation are done only in a graph theory uh, we follow the graph labeling where the vertices are assigned to real values subject to certain conditions like a gray score prime and others and in this paper we are give a summary of definitions some are like that uh, definitions one is the set of vertices and age is known as the graph uh, second one is in the graph theory a cycle of graph is a circular graph is consists of a single cycle in other word we can say some uh, numbers of vertices is connected in closed chain the cycle graph with vertices are called cn and a complete graph the simple undirected graph in which every pair of distinct vertices is connected by unit edge this is the graph definition of corona graph the corona of g1 there is two of graph g1 and g2 this is uh, are connected with corona of two graph g1 and g2 graph the obtain of talking one copies g1 with even vertices and even copies of g2 is joining by ith vertices g1 to every of ith copy of g2 the next definition is a triangular snake graph this is t and this is obtain of t and and this is a path of u1 u2 u1 by joining a ui and ui plus 1 to a vertex vi and this is replaced by a triangular graph and then the next one is triple triangular is a triple triangular snake graph t of t and consists of three triangular snakes that have a common path and there is this uh, other definitions of tree graph y of y on y and tree graph y and tree graph is obtained from a path is appending to the edge of vertex path adjacent to an end point and it is denoted by y and where any the numbers of vertices in the tree then then the next definition is a prime labeling of a graph g is an injective functions one to number of v such that every pair of adjacent vertices u and v this gcd of uh, two vertices is, it will be one the graph which admits a prime labeling is called prime graph and this, the main result of this first result uh, the cn of corona k1 graph admits of prime labeling and n is greater than or equal to c this is the result of base of this theorem this is c3 we are taking the n is 3 and this is the we are at uh, connected to k1 of graph this is a triangular of cn graph and we are connected to k1 completed graph and we are labeled vertices v1 v2 and v3 are 1 3 5 and the other of this k1 graph we are labeled with 2 4 and 6 now we can see uh, every two of adjacent vertices we can see easily the prime of gcd of 1 and 2 is also 1 gcd of 1 and 5 is 1 gcd of 5 and 3 is 1 gcd of 3 and 4 is one so we can say this whole graph is admits of prime labeling of the conditions the second result of this graph uh, the y of n admit of prime labeling and n is greater than or equal to 2 uh, y of y admit of prime labeling and n is greater than or equal to this is the y graph this is the path of this we are labeled with 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and, and this are labeled with 1 so we can now see uh, we can easily see that the label of two adjacent vertices this is the prime a uh, one and three is a prime two and three is a series of is a prime three and four is a series prime four and five is a series prime five and six is a series prime so we can hold this graph admits a prime labeling condition is fulfilled then the triangular snake graph admit also prime labeling uh, this is the third theorem of this my result and this is the base of uh, theorem of my result uh, this is t7 i take the t7 of triangular graph and this is the path our label was 1 3 5 7 9 11 30 and we are the label with vertices of v uh, this is 2 4 6 8 10 and 12 so we can see all the adjacent vertices are labeled and gcd of this adjacent vertices is also 1 So three and four G series one, five and four G series one, five and six G series one, seven and six G series one. So we can hold this of results of this admit of prime labeling graph. So results for uh, next for the triple triangular snake graph of T admit of prime labeling and n is greater than equal to two. And this is base of result of this theorem. The triple triangular snake graph T T seven graph admit of prime labeling in this whole in general T n is also uh, graph admit of prime labeling. So this is the path of this graph, and we are uh, this is three uh, three copies of triangular with connected with the path, and we are labeled whole the vertices between one two numbers of vertices. There is twenty two or twenty five numbers of vertices here, so we are labeled one to twenty five, and we can see every two adjacent vertices are labeled uh, as GCD of is one. So we can see this is the GCD of one, this is GCD of one. We can see every two adjacent vertices GCD is one. 
Now this is the conclusions of this my whole result in this work we are investigating four result about vertex prime labeling on some types of graph. This is a, this is has some reference. I use the definitions and some topics. Thank you, sir. Okay, um, Mr. Bharat. Yes, sir. Yes. Ah, uh, uh, one or two of my eh? suggestions are you should care yes. about a paper presentation. Yes. The first one is the first definition is we are saying that set of vertices and edges are a graph. Yeah. That is meaningless. Okay, if so you want right. to define, you should define from the uh, pair of uh, sets, no, from the non empty sets. Okay. And uh, give all other ones. Okay. And the second thing is uh, the first two results are known very early in 1990s onwards, Corona's uh, prime labeling and uh, you the second case you called it white ray but in the uh, ancient days it is called a caterpillar okay, sir, uh, all these results are available in galleon's survey if you go through galleon survey you can find it so before presenting a paper you should take care about uh, the existing okay, results okay thank you thank you sir okay thank you <clears throat> please call the next speaker. next Register number DM two not six DM two not six. Hello, sir. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Share your screen and continue. Am I screen visible, sir? Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, good, uh, good. Good morning, everyone. Myself, uh, Somnath Pal from the Department of Applied Sciences, Tejpur University, Assam. Uh, the title of my talk uh, that I'm going to give is on the distance and distance Laplacian integral graphs. The outline of today's presentation consists of introduction. Then I will give some backgrounds and go to the main result. Finally, conclusion and references. Uh, the introduction. The study that we do is basically interrelation between graphs and matrices, where uh, from a graph, uh, various kinds of matrices we consider and uh, seeing the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix, we can uh, see something about the structure of the graph and vice versa. The graph that we'll consider are finite simple graph. That means a uh, set of, uh, means a graph on a finite number of vertices with no uh, parallel edges and loops allowed. Order and size uh, means the number of vertices and number of edges of a graph. Uh, for a vertex U, all the vertices which are adjacent to it forms its neighborhood. Uh, the cardinality of the neighborhood is known as degree. And if every vertex is having the same degree, it's known as a regular graph. Uh, for two vertices U and V in a graph, the length of a shortest path between them gives the distance between them. And uh, among all possible distances, uh, among all possible pairs in a graph, the maximum is known as the diameter of the graph. Bipartite graph is a kind of a graph where uh, its vertex six can be partitioned into two parts. And if there is any edge in the graph, that is from one part to another part. So these terms we will be needing in my presentation. Now come to different kinds of matrices that we come across. The first one is adjacency matrix, uh, which is depending on the order of the graph, it is uh, of that order. And uh, an element, ij element is equals to one if the vertex i and j is adjacent. Otherwise it is zero. Uh, the matrix of vertex degrees, it is a diagonal matrix with uh, i the diagonal entry to be equal to the degree of the uh, i the vertex. Considering these two matrices, the Laplacian matrix is defined like this. It is the uh, matrix degree mat minus the adjacency matrix. A distance matrix is uh, defined as like that. The ij entry is equal to distance between the i vertex and the j vertex in the graph G. Obviously, it is considered only for connected graphs. Now, if I consider this particular graph on five vertices, then the three uh, matrices that I have discussed just now uh, ago uh, can be viewed like this. AG, LG, and DG. Where we can see uh, the AG, uh, the adjacency matrix, if I consider the first row uh, corresponding to uh, vertex one, we have only adjacent to vertex two. So the one, two entry is one and others are zero. Whereas we go to the DG, then corresponding to the first vertex one, we can see that one, two entry is one, one, three entry is uh, two, 
one uh, fourth entry is uh, three and one fifth entry is two because these are the uh, distance from uh, v1 to all other vertices so in a way if we consider the distance matrix then the distance matrix gives us a better idea of the structure of the graph compared to the adjacency matrix because it at a time tells whatever is happening with the vertex to all the vertices in the graph whereas an adjacency matrix concentrates only on the neighborhood but saying so since adjacency matrix consists only of zero and one entries whereas the uh, distance matrix consists elements ranging from zero to the diameter of the graph uh, as the diameter increases the computation level at distance matrix becomes uh, much much complicated and hence many of the research for distance matrix are restricted to only uh, not more than four or uh, three kind of diameters now applicability of distance matrix uh, is various uh, applicable in network analysis graph embedding theory and chemistry etc and recently they uh, we have seen that they have applications in music theory and molecular biology and others field also uh, now um, uh, just like a uh, degree of a vertex one can de define the transmission of a vertex to it is equal to sum of the distances from all other vertices with the corresponding vertex v and a matrix of vertex transmission is a diagonal matrix with width and uh, diagonal entry equal to the transmission of the width vertex now analogous to the normal laplacian matrix the distance laplacian matrix can be defined as the uh, difference between this transmission matrix and the distance matrix for the graph that we have shown in our figure this is the distance matrix as you can see uh, it is uh, sum of all the um, uh, for the first row the sum is 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 2 that is 8 so the sum is coming here at the diagonal entry and all other things become minus because it is minus of the distance matrix for some latest result of distance matrix we can see the reference number 13 and 14 uh, the thing that we'll discuss is, uh, is the spectrum of a matrix. Now, for a sym any symmetric matrix, spectrum consists of uh, the distinct eigenvalues and mentioned by their uh, corresponding multiplicities. Now, all the matrices that we have considered, they are symmetric matrices, so they will have real eigenvalues. So we can uh, label or uh, form a uh, spectrum for those matrices like this. Now, what is the background of this study? When uh, adjacency matrices were studied, then Harare and Swing tried to study the graphs which have complete integral spectrum. That means uh, all the eigenvalues of the adjacency ma matrix have uh, integer eigenvalues. So immediately after the study, they tried to uh, uh, answer this question, which graph have the integral spectrum? And they found that the general problem is uh, not so easily tractable. And uh, these are very rare kind of graph and it is very difficult to be found. As such is the case that out of uh, these many connected graphs on 12 vertices, only 325 are the integral graphs. But these integral graphs have applications in quantum networks allowing perfect state transfer. Now, several studies have been done on adjacency integral graphs, mostly in the class of trees. Uh, but as I said, research is restricted, uh, restricted to cubic graphs, four regular graphs, and some particular graphs only. Uh, one more approach that is uh, applied uh, is uh, finding new integral graphs from the uh, already known integral graphs using some graph operations, such as the sum of two integral graphs G1 and G2 and the product of two integral graphs G G1 cross G2 are all integral graphs. For a, a beautiful survey on integral graphs, you can uh, go to the reference number four. Now, when comparison made with Laplacian integral graphs, it is seen that the uh, situation in the Laplacian uh, case is much easier and they appear more occur, I'm sorry, they occur more frequently compared to the um, uh, adjacency case. For regular graphs, the, uh, the, uh, the relation between Laplacian and adjacency matrix is given by this relation. And therefore, if we have a, um, a integer eigenvalue for the adjacency matrix, it will also give us uh, integer eigenvalue for the Laplacian matrix. Therefore, uh, for regular graphs, the theory of Laplace and integral graphs is considered coincides with the uh, adjacency counterpart. But in the other case, means in uh, non-regular cases, there can be remarkable differences. For example, uh, on uh, six vertices, there are 112 connected graphs, but out of that, only six are adjacency integral. Out of them, five are regular, so they are always also Laplace and integral. But the last one, the sixth one, which is a uh, P3 uh, joined by H, uh, it is adjacency integral, but not Laplacian integral. Whereas uh, on the same six set of uh, 
on uh, means on order 6 there are 37 number of uh, laplacian integral graphs so as i uh, said in the beginning that there are more number of laplacian integral graphs compared to uh, adjacency um, integral graphs but uh, not like that every Lap uh, adjacency integral graph will be laplacian integral too and the process of finding new laplacian integral graphs is still on so we basically consider the distance and distance laplacian integral graph because very few results with respect to distance matrix are available till there as uh, we will ap apply the second approach that means from known integral graphs we will try to create uh, some new distance and distance laplacian integral graphs cartesian product and some other products are already used uh, uh, so uh, let me skip this one we have used basically this definition of a double graph which uh, consists of a graph uh, vg uh, and uh, taking uh, from a graph vg consisting of n number of vertices we take another copy of the same graph and label the vertices as u1 u2 and u1 and make uh, the ui the new vertices corresponding to uh, the neighbor of vi of the older graph for example if i consider the cycle on four vertices v1 v2 v3 v4 this is the old cycle and we consider a new copy u1 u2 u3 u4 now v1 was adjacent to v2 and v4 so this new one is also made to adjacent to v2 and v4 so this is known as double graph of a cycle c4 uh, now the distance spectrum of this double graph was studied by ingula and gatman and they have obtained the distance uh, spectrum of this kind of graph and it is it can be seen that uh, if mu y's are integral then this uh, mu y means the and the distance eigen values of the graph g means if g is integral then this double graph is also an integral because it is having the eigen values two times of mu y plus 1 and minus 2 only uh, so now to try to uh, conclude yes yes i will just uh, say, spare one more time uh, and we uh, we consider the distance laplacian case and i have seen that if mu1 mu2 mu1 are the distance laplacian eigen values of g if these are integers then uh, the double graph will have this kind of spectrum and it can be visible that these are two times of mu y that means they are integers and two times of uh, transmission these are also integer plus 4 so from a uh, distance laplacian integral graph we can create a new distance laplacian integral graphs by the help of this double graph operation as example the c4 that we have considered uh, this uh, c4 have uh, this kind of uh, spectrum so double graph of c4 will have this kind of integral spectrum so an another definition that we have considered is of extended double cover graph which is obtained from a graph uh, g on n vertices we create a bipartite graph having uh, double the or twice the number of vertices of g and each ui is made adjacent uh, make adjacent to every vi corresponding vi and other uj is adjacent to vi if it was adjacent to vj for example the same c4 uh e1 e2 e uh, v1 v2 v3 v4 these are the older vertices e1 e2 e3 e4 these are the newer vertices every vy is made adjacent, adjacent to uy is corresponding uy now previously v1 was adjacent to v2 and v4 so here v1 is adjacent to v u2 and u4 Please similar control. studies we have done and we can found that we can construct uh, distance laplace and integral graphs out of this edc graph operations okay please conclude the time and, is uh, making the conclusion so we have noted some important results on adjacency and laplace and integral graphs compared them and used graph operation to create distance and distance laplace and integral graphs basically the double graph operations and the um, edc graphs so these are the references that we have uh, used and thank you okay only one question do you have any results on spectrum of graphs related to distance matrix and the distance laplace matrix yes sir we have we have we have uh, created this kind of um, uh, means at uh, this kind of operations to create uh, distance uh, laplacian and distance uh, integral graphs only and not at, uh, have any results eh huh? you are trying no sir these are these are actually these operations are creating uh, or giving us the graphs only creating but i have can you relate these two give some condition this becomes this or uh, can you derive one from the other such a, do you have any results you no, are sir, creating no. some spectra and uh, some results but uh, yes, sir. connecting yes, them you know, with respect to the connection between these two do you have any results no sir. No, sir. no no okay okay thank you thank you
Thank you, sir, and thank you, participants. The remaining paper presentation will be continued in the afternoon session. Now we move on to the next invited lecture session. Before, before that I afternoon invite session, Dr. Roshni hello, Lee. hello, hello, please on. Uh, afternoon session means from ah uh, uh, from twelve from twelve fifty, sir. Oh, that that should be <laughs> okay. Okay, okay country, country. Now we move on to the next invited lecture session. I invite Dr. Roshni B, faculty of her college, coordinator of this program, to welcome and introduce Dr. Asha Sunil Kumar, who will give us a lecture on applications of graph theory in network security. Morning to all. It's my pleasure. Good morning to all. It's my pleasure. Good morning to all. It's my pleasure to introduce today's eminent resource person, Dr. Asha Sunil Kumar, Assistant Professor in Mathematics in School of Engineering and IIT. Manipal Academy of Higher Education, Dubai. Dr. Asha completed her bachelor degree from University of Kerala and master degree from Mahatma Gandhi University and master of philosophy from University of Kerala. Also, he, she secured PhD from University of Kerala. She has 14 years of research experience with nine major publications. On behalf of Department of Mathematics, Fatima Madha National College, and personally, I invite my senior, Dr. Ashama, for the invited lecture of this conference. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Hishmi. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Am I audible? Okay. Uh, thank you very much for giving me a chance to uh, do the lecture in this uh, international uh, conference. Thank you for the organizing committee. Uh, good morning, Dr. Suresh, sir. Uh, actually, he is my professor. So very nice to see you after a long break on the screen. Actually, after leaving uh, Kerala University, I am actually uh, had a long break. I didn't come to university also. So it's uh, very good to see you here as the chair of the session. Can I share my screen? Yes, ma'am, yes. Can you see my screen? Yes, ma'am. Now it is visible. Okay. So today's my topic is application of graph theory in network security. Uh, you know about network security. So far, so many uh, talks has been and talks and uh, paper presentation has been happened of graph. I was hearing that. So I think you will be familiar with the preliminaries, but still I'll go through a little bit of preliminaries. As you know, graph theory is again flourishing discipline in mathematical sciences. And uh, networks, we are actually in this age uh, in this modern age, we are in need of networks, okay? Everything is online. So if you consider the networks of internet, networks of Facebook, the whatever we are doing now as an international conference, people are uh, sitting in different places and they are accessing the uh, uh, international conference and accessing the data. So that means there are connections. So when we consider that connections, each particular node here, uh, for a simple example, if you uh, when you browse the internet, when you browse for particular data in the internet, you will get a web page, and uh, in the web page there are so many highlights, blue in color, so that you will click any one of the uh, these highlights and you will be taken to another page. So these pages are actually we can consider as nodes, and the links between the uh, pages can be considered as the edges. So 
that is a simple definition of network if I say. So these edges and links, uh, it should be secure, correct? Otherwise, there, there nowadays uh, attacks are more as we use the networks more. So there are different types of networks like transportation networks, energy supply networks, um, communication networks, defense system, uh, defense security networks are there. So if any uh, network is getting attacked, even a particular node, nodes, large nodes in a network is known as hubs. So large nodes means uh, uh, the degree of that particular node is uh, more when compared to the other nodes of the network. So this, uh, what do you mean by a node degree? Again, back to the preliminaries of graph, uh, you know the number of edges kind of, uh, in, incident to a node or incident to a vertex, it gives the degree of that particular node. Same in network also. So I, I'm just showing some uh, preliminary graph preliminaries. Those who are not uh, that much familiar with the graph can go through that. And uh, if there is an, a line or link joining two particular nodes, then we can say that they, they are the end nodes of the, of the edges, end vertices of that particular edge. And here we have uh, different types of graphs. If there is more uh, number of connections between two, uh, two particular nodes, then we can say that they are multiple edges or uh, parallel edges and such graphs in which multiple edges and uh, are and the loops are in uh, existing. Loops means a node is connected to itself. They are known as multigraphs. And a graph in which these uh, uh, these um, parallel edges and the loops are not there, then we can say that it is a simple graph. These are again some preliminaries, incident to, incident with. Usually we, when we uh, take a, a lecture in graph theory, we need all these uh, terms. That is why I just included into the lecture. So here network graphs, we will consider mostly the simple graphs. That means without any parallel edges and loops in unless it is required, okay? And uh, degree of the node, as, as we said, the number of links on that particular uh, node is considered as the degree of the node. And connectivity, connectivity of a graph can be considered as the minimum number of points whose removal results to a disconnected graph. Connectivity can be considered as the node connectivity and the link connectivity also. Uh, when the minimum number of uh, edges are removed, uh, and if the graph is becoming disconnected graph, then we can consider it as a uh, link connectivity. The number, uh, and for a complete graph, you know that it is the uh, connectivity is k is equal to n minus one. That means if you remove n minus one vertices only, or if you remove n minus one nodes in a completely connected graph, then only the graph is becoming disconnected. So that means uh, there is a point to be not yet, correct? Uh, this talk can be uh, made more uh, interactive that uh, I welcome that uh, because if you can share your own thoughts uh, with this with me, then it will be more uh, informative actually. When we talk about a network uh, security, a network we can say that they are secure if it is functions properly, even if uh, so. Uh, if even if it is facing attacks, if it function properly after the attacks, then we can say that the network is uh, secure. But if um, the if any attack is happening, like a virus attack or uh, malicious attack uh, or random attacks, there are different types of attacks. Some systematic failure is happening, and sometimes random failures of the nodes is also happening. Systematic failures mostly comes because of the design, uh, because of the failure in the design. But random failures are not like that. It can be any random attack to a particular type of nodes, okay, uh, using some virus, uh, or it can be uh, random failure of the nodes because of some technical reason also. So that also will create the uh, disruption in the data flow in the particular particular network. So security of a network, we have to uh, discuss about some threats also. What do you mean by that? Different types of threats. One is the malicious type of attacks. 
malicious attacks means the target nodes with high degree which leads to a drastic collapse in the structure so when uh, attack happens to a highest degree node that means most of the connection are concentrated on that particular degree so many important uh, uh, servers will be connected to that particular server and the server is getting attacked we can consider that case then the drastic collapse of the structure itself happens and it will go for a shutdown another uh, attack is the uh, along with this malicious attack there is another attack which doesn't collapses the structure but it may again freeze the a part of the structure high definition high degree uh, adaptive attack is another type of attacks which corresponds to the failure of the most stressed nodes in the physical networks so it can cause the collapse of the structure or it can be uh, actually uh, freeze a part of the structure also so due to the random failures or malicious attacks when a fraction of nodes in a network are malfunctioning the whole network may be broken into isolated parts so that again causes sometimes data loss okay and if it is considering a defense security system then uh, that will be a major problem in uh, major problem also so uh, we have to find measures to strengthen the security of the uh, network so how graph theory can help in that so what is the role of graph theoretical properties which enhance the security of a network system that is the uh, that is the stock based on i will take a few uh, properties here because uh, because of the time li limit we cannot discuss all the properties but a few properties we will discuss here so here uh, when we remove a uh, node sequentially uh, there is an as we are discussing different types of attacks another type of attack is the uh, between the centrality in descending order so uh, here what do you mean by this between the centrality so between the centrality is a particular node which comes in between uh, uh, between the nodes and have and is uh, most of the shortest path is passes through this particular targeted nodes okay and the target nodes will be have high between the centrality if it appears in many shortest path so those who are um, attackers will be targeting the high betweenness uh, centrality node that means it is passing through many shortest path if, and if you target that particular node and destroy it then it will cause again the breakdown of the uh, whole structure so we can uh, find out the betweenness or centrality of a particular node using the formula sigma u not equal to v equal not equal to w sigma uv of uh, uh, u divided by sigma uv so it is the uh, measured as the number of shortest path that passes through the target nodes for example i have taken one example to show that if you consider the bc4 which has uh, having um, 15 as the between the centrality if you target that particular node and if that particular fourth, uh, fourth node is getting uh, attacked then again Uh, this connection of the system will happen as an example so how to improve the robustness and resilience of the modern infrastructure that is what we have to think so before that what is what do you mean by robustness and resilience so um, uh, when we consider the robustness and resilience of an infrastructure we have to consider the underlying network structures so if you can construct a network structure in such a way that it, the robustness and resilience is increasing then that structure will be a best success structure if we are not able to find, uh, create the such structure modification of the existing structure is also a solution okay but how how to do that so robustness means a network is robust when the system remains globally connected even after a fraction of nodes or links has been removed so there that means to a particular node what is the meaning of that robustness so the robustness the network should remain globally connected even after a fraction of nodes or links has been removed so if one node is uh, removed then Uh, uh, according to um, the uh, definition when one node is removed all the links to the node is also getting affected correct so uh, if it if the node should not be getting affected that means some other uh, connection should be there to the particular node so that the node will not get see if we have a node and so many connections are there to the node and if you are removing this node uh this whole node in the 
network will get removed or get affected which loses the connection uh, from the whole network or if it is coming in between um, the structure then again collapse of the structure will happen so this should not happen if that doesn't happen then we can say that the network is robust so construct network systematically which are robust again uh, random failures is one solution second solution is the modification of the current network to improve the resilience and robustness of the networks so we have to develop the strategies to modify the networks to get the resilience under the malicious attack how to achieve this resilience okay there are many ways so the one particular parameter which increases the uh, which influences the resilience is the assertivity nature nature any one of you know what do you mean by the assertive nature of the network assertivity means how the nodes are connected in a network okay so how the nodes are connected in a network is known as assertivity so uh, what that what that means high there are uh, two types of nodes in a network high degree nodes are there and lower degree nodes are there a simple one degree node two degree node or such type of nodes are also there in a network so higher degree nodes when they are more likely linked to the other nodes to keep the network connected together with that if it is connected to the higher degree nodes other higher degree nodes also then we can say that the network is more assertive and disassociative network means this is not happening that means higher degree nodes are only related to um, the linked to the vertices of lower degree okay they are not much related to the other high degree nodes that is why disruption happens so assortative uh, networks when you uh, look at in that way you feel that it is more robust but it is not that much secure uh, uh, to the malicious attacks so uh, because of because they that type of networks are more fragile to the uh, malicious attacks so how can we uh, compensate this uh, this attacks this malicious attacks if there exist a other uh, path between the nodes then uh, we can see that the malicious attacks to a great extent can be um, can be restricted At this is possible when you without restriction if you add the links between the nodes and make the network a completely connected then that is a solution but when you consider the power lines um, the power grid networks the transportation networks and the telecommunication networks itself adding a link is not that much easy connection between one particular node to another particular node it means that you are connect you are uh, creating a link between the node that is actually comes under the budget that it cost okay uh, putting an edge uh, it's again is a uh, loss of money so if you uh, simply increase the links on drawing we can do but in practical uh, uh, case it is not possible practically it is an impossible to just randomly put the uh, links and make it a totally connected network so cost becomes too high so some other Uh, uh some other uh, solution should be found in order to solve this problem so another thing is that without increasing the uh, number of nodes uh, the number of edges without increasing the uh, increasing the number of links uh, will cause the uh, charge but if you keep the degree of each node invariant and change the mixing pattern in such a way that the assertivity can increase okay so I'll, uh, this type of uh, uh, sorry there is disturbance in this so uh, if you if you consider the uh, degree of each node invariant we can and we change the mixing patterns among the nodes we can increase the assortivity so there is some particular pattern in doing that okay so and that all has to be proved using algorithms uh, then only we can uh, say that the uh, method is more effective usually robustness uh, uh, robustness of a network is 
um, actually considered by analyzing the percolation threshold QC, which actually denotes the critical fraction of randomly removed nodes at which the uh, network collapses, or it can be considered as the fraction of nodes uh, in uh, fraction of nodes after the removal of this, the fraction of the uh, network of the whole network remains connected. So when a system or part of the system suffers a major damage without collapsing completely, then this approach is again a failure. So that means if uh, uh, the uh, percolation uh, threshold QC can be used as an analysis of the uh, or the measure of robustness of the networks if it happens that a uh, complete collapse of the network after the removal of particular node. But if uh, one, uh, one part of the network is only getting affected or the network is facing only a major damage, then um, uh, the robustness cannot be uh, analyzed using the percolation threshold. So that's neither at all in their paper has uh, defined a new measure for the robustness. It is one by N into Sigma Q equal to one to N S of Q. What this S of Q and uh, everything means. N is the total number of nodes in the network. S of Q is the fraction of nodes in the largest connected uh, cluster after removing Q and nodes. So one by N is actually a normalization factor which ensures the robustness of network of different sizes when compared. So, and this, uh, this robustness have a range. One by N less than or equal to R less than or equal to 0 0.5 is the range of the robustness uh, that uh, measure R. When a one by R equal to one by N corresponds to a star network and R equal to 0 0.5 and to a completely connected network. That means the network will be completely connected then R equal to 0 0.5. So okay. we, must, we must do the uh, mixing pattern of the network in such a way that the R value is increased the more. Yeah, so, the process is repeated until... Sorry. Sorry, some yeah. mic is on. Yeah. Swapping of edges can be done in such a way that the R value is improved. So this process is repeated. The swapping of edges uh, is once uh, the swap the edges, calculate the R value. Uh, and if it is improved, accept the change. If not improved, then uh, do it again with any other pair of uh, nodes. And uh, this process, that is the algorithm. So once uh, the uh, once we uh, this process is not giving any substantial improvement, we can stop the procedure. And the uh, al algorithm has been verified numerically for so many tests, and uh, thereby they have seen that R value can be efficiently. Uh, improved by the swapping of edges method. So this is an example A, uh, the figure A uh, shows in a real network, figure B uh, shows after swapping, after swapping of edges, uh, uh, how the edges becomes, uh, how the network becomes more robust. So R value is more compared to the uh, figure A. Another peculiarity of the networks uh, is having, the robust networks is having is the scale-free property. Scale-free networks are uh, networks having, uh, networks which, uh, whose degrees of the nodes follow a power law distribution. Now, what is power law degree distribution? Power law degree distribution is actually the probability that a site has K connections is modeled by the continuous distribution P of K equal to C into K raised to minus alpha where k value is lying between m less than or equal to k less than or equal to r. C is the normalization constant and m and k are the lower and upper cutoffs from the site connectivity respectively. So you can see here as the number of links per nodes increases, q nodes are highly linked and uh, most nodes are, so we get a uh, uh, power, uh, power load, uh, the uh, network follows, the network node degrees follows a power low degree distribution. The networks which follows, the, whose degrees follows a power low degree distribution are said to be scale-free networks, which are considered as more uh, robust against the random failures. 
but still they are not free from the malicious attacks so in order to do the uh, uh, to secure the network from the malicious attack we have to find uh, some method same like the uh, previous method of swapping of edges until the robustness is increased to a scale free network so basically optimize the networks which follow a power law distribution is scale free in nature and have an onion structure onion structure is what as the name indicates there are more connections in, for a, to a particular nodes that means one uh, node can be accessed from so many other parts that is the uh, peculiarity of the uh, onion structure so onion structure of the network is defined as high degree nodes form a core can be considered as the nucleus of the network so which is uh, hierarchically surrounded by layers of nodes with decreasing degrees so it looks like the uh, that uh, peels of that onion assortivity property and onion property are uh, of the network are same then you will get a confusion because assortivity uh, property is also quite similar to the onion structure but they are not similar okay that confusion can happen between the assortivity property and the onion property of the networks this uh, this after the swapping of edges whatever structure we are getting is uh, actually onion in nature um, uh, and this uh, figure shows an example for the onion structure of a network so onion property and assortivity property are not same then what is the um, why it is not so assortivity every uh, onion structures are assortative in nature but are uh, not conversely all the on assortative structure are not uh, onion structures so because of that onion structures are more um, more secure than the associative structure when at, uh, when facing a malicious attack so onion structures are basically considered as resilient to the random failures Snyder et al. propose that for malicious type of attacks, the robustness of the network can be improved by randomly rewiring each edge of the last shell, maintaining the in, uh, invariant density of the connections in an onion structure. So earlier, as I said, swapping of edges is possible. So different ways are there to swap the edges. So here in uh, Snyder, uh, in Snyder has uh, in his paper has proposed that. Uh, in the last shell if you do the random uh, randomly rewiring just to improve the um, r value so uh, for in each step you have to check the r value and uh, and then if uh, it is uh, the new structure is having more r value than the old structure we can accept the change and if it is not again uh, do the swapping uh, do the swapping of edges then again the process is repeated until there is uh, the r value is not at all improved in the modified structure okay another property is that characterizes the network topology is the average degree of the nearest neighbor of k degree node and it is defined as the measure of the degree degree correlation degree degree correlation means the probability that the uh, link k uh, uh, the link connects the k and the k dash um degree nodes k is the degree of a particular node k dash is the degree of another particular node then the probability that a link connects the k degree node to k dash degree node that is the um, uh, average degree of the nearest neighbor of k so it can be measured as if ki is the degree of the ith node and nk is the number of nodes of degree k um and ekk ek ki is the number of connections between the ith node and the nodes of degree k then the average degree of ne uh, nearest neighbor of k degree node equal to sigma i ki into ek ki divided by nk in the robust network it has been shown that this degree average degree of nearest neighbor uh, neighbor of k is uh, high for the high degree node and low for the low degree node but in a normal network it is not the case it varies okay uh, once the network is optimized then we can see the degree average degree or uh, degree of the nearest neighbor of k degree node is high for the high degree node and low for the low degree node 
Another property is the average shortest path length, L mean uh, between two nodes. And it is defined as one by N into N minus one sigma IJ uh, to N. That means we are considering all the pairs of the uh, network, pa pair of nodes in the network, LIJ. LIJ is the geodesic between two nodes, I and J in the network. Summation goes over all the possible pairs of nodes in the network. So this, when the shortest path length, when you compare, uh, when you see the uh, scale-free networks which follow the power load is uh, power load degree distribution, um, which is an optimized uh, network, this shortest average shortest path length is uh, increasing very slowly, uh, and this shows that the uh, network has an ultra small world property. So uh, that. That means each node is accessible within a very less number of uh, nodes. That path length will be very less, mostly less than three in an optimized network. Because it increases logarithmically uh, when compared to the total number of nodes n. So these are the four uh, graph theoretic properties which characterizes the network topology. I wanted to discuss with you. Uh, not only these are the properties, there are so many other properties like um, uh, ultra small network, small world networks, um, scale free, free properties are there. Um, so uh, it is, if we get more time, we can discuss about that. Power low degree distribution, average degree of the nearest neighbor of K degree node, onion structure of the network, average shortest path length. I have taken some examples to show the networks. Network graphs, this is an Apollonian network graph for n equal to one, two, three. Barbasi Albert model graph with uh, 50 nodes. These are the references. Thank you. I hope I didn't exceed at the time. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Now I invite Ms. Amu, faculty of our college, to deliver the vote of thanks. Today in this auspicious... Today in this auspicious occasion, it is my pleasure to thank you, Dr. Asha, ma'am. It was a very informative and fruitful session on application of graph theory in network security. In this session, uh, we got the idea about associativity property and onion structure property and many other important things. Asha, ma'am, I thank you for sharing your time and knowledge with us on behalf of our college and the Department of Mathematics. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear participants. Thank you, Sureshin sir, Asha ma'am. Uh, we will rejoin after uh, at a sharp 12.50 after lunch break. Dear participants, please rejoin up at sharp 12.50.
முடிஞ்ச நிலை முடிந்தது
Suresha. Suresha, are you there? Suresha, are you there? Participants, are you all ready? We will begin the session four of our paper session soon. Suresh sir, are you there? Yeah. We shall start if everybody is okay. Max gives us hope that every problem has a solution. So whenever you face a problem in your life, just think about Max and move on. Welcome back, everyone. Now let's continue the paper presentation session. The session will be conducted in the following order. BM 207, 209, 211, 212, 214, 201, 202, and 213. Participants, please note that you will be given a total of 10 minutes, 8 minutes to present, and 2 minutes for discussion. So, uh, shall we start? Yeah, you Suresh, shall. Sir, shall we start? Uh, you shall. Okay, so uh, register number BM210. You may start your presentation now. I'm sorry, sorry. Uh, register number BM207. You may start your presentation now. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, am I audible, sir? You are, audi you are audible. Please share your screen and continue. Okay. It is. Okay, sir. Yes, please. Uh, today, uh, respected uh, sir, today I present my research paper, a study on relation among consecutive integers and its application. Myself, MD Shaitul Islam Khan, uh, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Pandit Dindal Bhattaya Darshan Mahavitala, Amjanga. I am from Assam. Uh, in this paper, we study uh, relation among uh, 
consecutive integers of an equivalence class of congruence modulo m for any positive integer m. Ah, or if x, y, z are three uh, consecutive elements of a equivalence class, then this satisfies this equation. And this equation is also satisfied not only uh, positive integers, this also satisfies negative integers. If we put m equal to one, then we get relation among uh, three consecutive integers. So next, uh, we use this uh, relation and uh, uses of these relations are the merit of this paper. Uh, first of all, uh, we, uh, we know uh, the relation, congruence relation R is defined in this way A related B if and only if A congruence B mod M. And uh, the, we know that this relation R uh, has uh, M equivalence class 0, 1, 2, dot, dot, M minus 1. And uh, if uh, uh, if we take X, Y, Z, any consecutive in elements, then uh, uh, this relation is satisfies. And next, uh, if we next, uh, if we take uh, X, Y, Z, R, any three consecutive elements of uh, zero equivalence class, then uh, there exists we find consecutive integers A, B, C such that x equal to am, y equal to bm, z equal to cn, and b square equal to ac plus 1. And if we take n plus 1 numbers of uh, consecutive uh, elements of a equivalence class, then this uh, n plus 1 elements are also satisfies uh, this uh, equation. And uh, if we take these elements from equivalence class of zero, then we also get uh, the relation, these two relations. Uh, uh, we define the any three consecutive integers. The, we already, uh, I already say this uh, relation y square equal to x plus one. This relation is satisfies any three consecutive uh, integers. And no other integers is satisfies this equations and only consecutive integers are satisfies this equation. Uh, negative, ne negative consecutive integers is also satisfies this equation. The order uh, this three x, y, z, we define this uh, order triple at is consecutive triple and uh, next definition we define uh, uh, we know the Pythagorean triple the definition of this and next uh, definition 2.3 uh, the oh, we know this uh, this is uh, a definition of Fibonacci number and we write some properties of we uh, this is well known properties of Fibonacci number and we uh, main result we first uh, main result this is a very simple main result the three four five this three four five uh, uh, are the three consecutive uh, numbers and this consecutive triple also uh, is the only consecutive triple which is also pythagorean triple that means three square plus four square equal to five square uh, we prove with the help of uh, this relation, um, this theorem, and next we uh, uh, prove theorem uh, 3.2 if uh, f1, f2, f3, dot, dot, fn are Fibonacci numbers, then this uh, numbers, uh, consecutive Fibonacci number, these numbers are also satisfies this equation. Uh, we know the Fibonacci consecutive numbers. Three uh, Fibonacci consecutive numbers are satisfies uh, this equation. Uh, 
uh, uh, fr square equal to fr minus 1 fr plus 1 plus 1 if r is odd and fr minus 1 fr plus 1 minus 1 if r is even if we put r equal to 2 3 4 dot dot n and adding them we get uh, this relation and uh, for, uh, if n is odd then we get this and if n is even we get this and we prove the, uh, the main result in this way and next uh, we prove a inequalities with the help of the relation among consecutive integers the if x1 x2 x3 dot dot x and plus 1 are any consecutive elements of any uh, equivalence class of congruence modulo m for any positive integer m then these uh, numbers are satisfies these consecutive numbers are satisfies this equation this are uh, inequalities uh, we prove this the if these are inequalities, then uh, the consecutive elements of the equivalence class and this, then this satisfies uh, this equation. Uh, and uh, from this equation, we prove this in uh, next, uh, we prove uh, if x1, if x, y, z are three consecutive elements of any equivalence class of congruence modulo m for any positive integer m then y square equal to m square uh, modulo x if uh, m square less than uh, x and y square equal to r modulo x if m square greater than x and we prove this uh, result uh, in this way and uh, next we take some uh, we write some lemma that is Lagrange theorem uh, if p is a prime and f of x equal to this where p a does not divide a p is a polynomial of degree n greater than equal one uh, and with the help of this Lagrange theorem and with uh, I prove this uh, result if p is an odd prime and the quadratic congruence this can be written uh, of the form this where uh, n square equal to b square minus 4ac and then twice a x1 plus b p and twice a x2 plus b are three consecutive elements of some equivalence class of congruence modulo n and uh, we Next, uh, the, then we find x1, x2 are in congruence relation of the quadratic congruence. Now we prove this result uh, with the help of relation between consecutive uh, uh, elements of a equivalence class. And we, uh, we write a example uh, of this above theorem and we write uh, act, uh, on the base of this above theorem, we write a corollary 3.9 also, and these are my reference, and thank you. Okay, in your condition, if you drop the condition y square equal to xz plus one, what happens? Sir? Yes. In your uh, relation, you put one condition y square equal to xz plus one. Yes, Am I right? yes sir. Uh, if you drop that condition, what happens in your result? Uh, we use this uh, if uh, I cannot drop this result because we use this result. Uh, and with the help of this result, we prove some uh, theorems and we apply this result. So you didn't see if you, if you drop this, what happens? You never uh, think of it. Eh? You just yes, implemented sir. these conditions and did some results. Am I right? Yes. 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 Okay. 
you give three consecutive numbers 3 4 5 that is very obvious can you give two digits numbers for x y z that is fine two, two digit numbers uh, yeah, also triple. satisfies this one Tri triple two digit triple uh two digit uh, numbers are also satisfies this condition and all integers are satisfies this condition all consecutive integers are all three uh, two digit con that means you are giving 3 4 5 can you uh, give any three digit that means 25 30 38 30, or 40 yes something. yes yes these are also satisfies not and only positive two digit uh, three digit uh, negative numbers are also satisfies this condition okay can you do you have any relation to identify such numbers except you are uh, just uh, leave the your condition your condi condition should satisfy that okay without using that condition can you identify such three triples if three triples with uh, satisfying this property okay accepted is there any way to identify such uh, three triples no you have no uh, uh, yes i identify uh, if we take uh, 14 15 16 then uh, this numbers are also satisfies this condition uh, yes all uh, positive not only positive a uh, consecutive integers negative uh, consecutive integers okay. also satisfies this condition that's all fine that is fine my question is can you have any idea or condition to identify such three triples suppose i am taking uh, x y z one condition is okay What is square equal to for uh, x is at plus one? Can you identify any three triples satisfying this condition? Do you have any result related to that? Then you can do a lot in your work related to your topic. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, uh, sir. Uh, uh, you have uh, you have not mentioned any applications. The topic is a study on relations among consecutive integers and its applications. can you mention one application i apply this condition and with the help of this condition i prove some uh, theorems uh, some results on uh, fibonacci number and yeah, okay. uh, the question is you have uh, defined some theorem can you give an application of any one theorem or any one result you have proved so i uh, prove some result uh, apply this relations okay thank you thank you sir thank you now now we are moving on to the second paper of our best paper category uh, please not dm209 on the topic a comparative study on solve game problem using facim ranking technique dm209 Sir, my screen are visible? Not yet. Share your screen. Your name is visible. Harida Shakti. DM two not nine. please begin your presentation uh, 
Yes, Haris, from yes. Today my topic is a comparative study on solve game problem using fuzzy ranking technique. This is my abstract. In this paper, I solve the game Harida, problem. Excuse me, Harida, your screen is not visible. First, share your screen. I will share my screen. But uh, in the screen, Harida Shaktivel has started screen sharing, not it shared. Excuse me, sir. I think DM209 is having some technical issue. Yeah. Uh, uh, DM209, we will call you later. Uh, we can move on to next paper presentation, DM211. Okay. DM211 on the topic. A study on cooperative and non-cooperative germ theory security for wireless sensors, sensor networks. Okay. DM211. DM211, you may start your presentation now. DM211, are you there? DM211, are you there? Suresh, sir, we could okay. move. Ah, go to the next. DM212, on a study on AP space in topological space. DM212. Yes, sir. Audible. Yes, yeah. It is audible. Please share your screen and proceed. Okay, sir. Sir, is it visible, sir? Yeah, yeah, visible. Please proceed. So good afternoon to all. I'm Dr. P. Vijay Shanti, Assistant Professor, Department of Mathematics, Teddy College of Arts and Science, Tenny. Uh, my presentation topic is a study on is AP space in topological space. This is the outline of my presentation work. Uh, introduction, basic definitions, main results, and also references. Uh, this is the introduction. I uh, have, have introduced the new definitions of topological concept, namely, yes, AB space. Uh, yes, approximations by points is uh, explanations for the relevant spaces which are referred to as AP spaces. So, however, there is no way to see which points are related to the approximations means uh, which are packed in the approximations of the S closest by S sequentially closed set. Uh, these are the uh, S AB space. Uh, moreover, I investigate some characterizations of S AB space. And next to the going to uh, some basic definitions. Uh, if uh, k is a subset of a natural number and k n is denoted by the set of uh, k in k so, and k less than or equal to n and uh, k n is a cardinality of uh, k. So the natural density, the limit exists. If it is a limit exists, the density of uh, k is defined by limit n tends to infinity cardinality of k n divided by n. 
So next, what is that? Uh, countable characters uh, for each subset A of X. Whenever the closure of B is a subset of A, for every countable subset B of A, then A equal to closure of A. So next, what is that? Uh, statistically sequentially closed or a yes, sequentially closed if for every sequence of the points a uh, with a, a sequence convert s converges to x then s s belongs to a so converges uh, so statistically or s converges uh, if the sequence suppose the sequence converges to a point x in x Uh, if for every neighborhood U of X, the density of n in n such that X n is belongs to a open set U, and this uh, density is equal to one, uh, the the point X is uh, uh, called a uh, S yes, limit. Next definition: the point is said to be uh, statistically sequentially accumulation points of A or uh, yeah, statistically uh, sequentially derived set. Uh, if uh, there is a sequence of points in A except a set X, uh, such that is a S limit of the sequence X n equal to X. Uh, the functions, if we we, we uh, define the functions, a sequence is closure operator of a uh, power sets of uh, X two power sets of X. Is uh, defined for each subset y of x. Uh, a sequence of closure of y equal to set up all x in x such that x n is s converges to a point in x uh, for some sequence of points in y is called the s sequence of closure operator on x. Next definition. So <clears throat> s is countably compact. These are statistically sequentially countably compact. If it uh, Uh, if any infinite subset of A is uh, at least one accumulation points of A, and next definition is Pritchard duration. So yes, Pritchard durations means uh, for each subset of A of X, uh, say S sequence closer of A equal to closer of A. Suppose this uh, subset is uh, countable subset, we can uh, uh, we can call the countable S Pritchard duration. And next definition. S sequential space. A topological space is said to be a sequential space if you every statistically sequentially closed set is a closed set. Uh, next, going to main result. Uh, uh, in this section, so uh, we discuss uh, about uh, fact about the S C B space and S C A C B space. Uh, the following functions are uh, defined. So S A B space or uh, S A B is closure operator equal to set of X in L sequence closure of A is uh, except A such that S sequence closure of A F is uh, equal to yeah uh, F union of uh, single transient X for some subsets of A. Uh, a. This called a uh, S A B is closure operator and uh, S A C B is uh, operator means uh, uh, countable subsets of A. It is clear that for each subset of V X, it's a A is a subset of A sequence in closure operator. It's a subset of A A C B space, and it's a subset of A C A A B closure operator. It's a subset of closure of A. Uh, for each countable subset A of X, that is called uh, that is uh, equal R A C A B space is equal to A C A C B space. Uh, this is an example for. Uh, Uh, every uh, S A B space are not a uh, S sequentially closer operator. And next definition, uh, S A B space are uh, one more uh, defined as uh, for each subset A of X is S A B space S A B closer of closer of A equal to closer of A. The countable S S A B. Uh, for each countable subset y of x is uh, uh, then s a b closer of y equal to closer of y and also s a c b uh, so for each counter uh, for each subset uh, y of each countable subset of y of x is the s s a c a b closer of y equal to closer of y and next uh, the theorem for Uh, yes, A C B satisfying the Grotowski closure axioms. Uh, that is uh, every uh, yes A C B of empty set is empty. Yes A C B of X equal to X A is a subset of yes A C B of A, and yes A A yes A C B of A is a closure of A. 
uh, A is a subset of B implies S A C B is a sub closure of A is a subset also A is A C B of uh, S A C B closure of B. Our uh, next one is A C B is uh, A of e union or uh, uh, S A C B of B equal to uh, S A C B of A union B. And next, uh, so Brutosi closer action says yes, ACB of A equal to yes, ACB of yes, ACB of A. Next, the proposition uh, suppose a reference is space, uh, the following hold any S Richard erasure space is SAB space, uh, any S sequence is SAB space is S Richard erasure, uh, any closely continuous image of SAB space is SAB space. Any space with a unique uh, SS accumulation point is a, a, a B space. And next theorem, uh, a, a, a topological space then the following point, every countable S A B and S sequential space is a S preacher duration. And second one is every countable S A B and the countable diagonal space is a S A C P. And next theorem. So let is a, X is a SS countably compact SAB space, then X is a, a spiritual duration space. As is a corollary, uh, yeah, suppose X is a SS countably compact uh, countably SAB space, then X is a countably spiritual duration space. These are my references. Okay. You start so with uh, some results on AP space. Yes, sir. But uh, whenever you present a paper, you didn't mention anything about the AP space. SAP space. How will you distinguish, uh, distinguish AP and SAP? Uh, you yes. should be. Uh, uh, yes. yes, sir. Uh, so, 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 suppose we, we, uh, we are taking a, a countable subset, then it's called a yes, ACP. Oh, not yes, ACP. What do you mean by AP space? AP space first. When will you say that your topological space becomes an AP space? Uh, yes, AP closer of A equal to closer of E. That is your and your uh, AP space. Must, uh, question is when will uh, topological space become an AP space? For each Good. subset of the set is uh, satisfying the condition S closer of A equal to closer of A. So that space is also called uh, SAP space. Then give one example such that which is AP space but not SAP space. Yes, sir. These are examples for ASAC. One AP space which is not an SAP space. This is SCP. Uh, SCP. My question is: yes, Give sir. one example this, of a uh, also, AP. Also, also telling uh, this example is AP space, but not the yes, SAP space. Yes. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, 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 we are we define the any space uh, um, that space is a uh, not a define the countable set countable okay. subsets give one example said that uh, uh, I'm sure that it is AP space but which is not SAP do you yes, have sir, some yes, example otherwise sir. leave it otherwise yes, leave sir. it huh? yes, yes. Sir, yes sir okay and uh, so similarly, the same thing. You should have some uh, clear cut knowledge about it. You have your reason space. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, immediately, a question is how will you distinguish your yes, front your reason and a normal your reason? What are the properties satisfied by your reason space, but which is not by yes, front space? Huh? You have some uh, clear cut, a strong idea about that. Then only we shall, uh, it is meaningful to do some extension on this. Okay. Okay. Ah, okay. Okay. Please. Uh -huh. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Our best paper category continues. Next register number DM two one four on multifunctions in nano ideal space. DM two one four. Ah yes, I am here. I can share my screen. Okay, you shall. Visible, sir? No, not yet. 
on science visible sir no yes kiss me organizers you can you can do one thing call all other paper presenters and send the slide to your mail then you can uh, operate it okay okay sir we will then, do that uh, then we shall uh, avoid all these uh, inconveniences time lag okay, sir. okay we okay. will do the necessary things yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. okay and we call the next participant oh uh, dn214 are you ready ha uh, ready ma'am ready ma'am one second i share the my screen okay okay that is why this oh, ready call you the, uh, next time we can move on to the next presentation dm214 ha yes ma'am one second dm214 you may wait we are moving on to the next presentation dm201 okay ma'am okay dm201 on the topic deriving topological descriptors of the type 3 rectangular hex derived network via m polynomial dm201 you may present now okay am i audible audible please share your screen yes sir yes So can you see my screen? No. Ah, uh, now it's okay. 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 Oh. So good afternoon to all of you. Uh, myself is uh, Dr. Shiv Shankar Das, and uh, I'll be talking on deriving uh, topological in descriptors of type three rectangular hex derived network via M polynomial. Okay. Uh, student, PhD student, Shikha Rai. Okay, and uh, so presently she is out of station, so I'll be presenting this uh, work. Okay, so I am faculty in Banaras Hindu University. Um, to start with, uh, outline my, of my talk is basically this is a part of chemical graph theory. So I will be talking about something about basics of graph theory, then topological indices, graph polynomial, rectangular hex derived network, for which I will be applying uh, this result. Uh, applying this uh, topic here, and uh, there are certain main results, conclusion, and references. Now, to start with, okay, so uh, graphs are used. All well, you know, graphs are used as mathematical models to uh, successfully investigate variety of specific real-world problems. Okay, and graph theory can be uh, used to solve problems uh, related to computer technology, psychology, physical uh, physics, chemistry, and in different uh, uh, diverse field. It has application. In addition, graph theory has the application in math in mathematics itself, uh, including topology, matrix theory. Uh, so there is spectral graph theory. Uh, there is an area, probability, group theory, and so on. So I'll be focusing on chemical graph theory, where uh, it is a discipline of mathematical chemistry, uh, which make you makes use of graph theory to study uh, theoretical analysis uh, to study and theoretically analysis. which is uh, denoted as QS AR is uh, are employed uh, to analyze uh, the uh, physical and chemical characteristics or um, biological activities of a uh, molecular graph mm, without any uh, uh, participation of lab trials. Okay, 
So uh, we need some basic definition of uh, definitions of graph. G is denoted as graph with V is a vertex set, E is a, e is a edge set, and degree of a vertex. All we know that degree of a vertex is the number of adjacent uh, adjacent uh, uh, vertices, uh, and it is denoted by U. Okay. And next is. Uh, um, Topological index uh, in chemical uh, chemical graph theory. Topological indices is a molecular descriptor. Uh, it is used to evaluate the chemical molecular uh, evaluate the certain information of molecular graph. In particular, it converts a molecular structures in uh, chemical information into a valuable number to determine the topology and uh, and also seen a significant role in the study of QS, PR, and QS here. Okay, there are a wide uh, uh, correlation, uh, wide collection of uh, topological descriptors. Okay, uh, these are basically used uh, from chemical point of view. These are basically used for uh, certain chemical and bio. All those things. Okay, etc. Okay, and there are certain class of the uh, uh, topological indices. The standard uh, class of topological indices are degree-based topological indices, distance-based topological indices, mixture of degree and distance-based topological indices, and counting-related topological indices. Okay, we will be focusing on degree-based topological indices. It is uh, the first and very old uh, topological indices. Uh, degree-based topological indices, Jacob index. So this is uh, in the equation of uh, first Jacob indices. Uh, this is the equation of second Jacob indices. It was uh, uh, proposed by Ivan Gutman and uh, Trinastic around 1972. So it mainly focuses on the external edges and vertices of the molecular graph. Okay. So next is modified Jacob indices, which is a um, uh, just uh, inspired by the results of these. Uh, the modified uh, Jacob indices has been presented. Uh, um, this is the equation, and these focus on the internal edges and vertices of a uh, of the molecular graph. Then is Ranitic index, one of the famous uh, degree-based topological is uh, Ranitic index, uh, proposed around 1975 by Milan Ranitic, uh, and uh, it has several application in drug design, and um, and uh, it took uh, because it, it took around 20 years to uh, 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 get the more applicability of the eight um, uh, Bolbos and uh, Amik at all introduced the general generalized version of uh, Ranitic index, which is given by this one. Inverse Ranitic index is given by this equation. Harmonic index. Uh, am I audible? Yes. Okay, there okay. is some noise. There is some noise. Okay, in harmonic index is proposed around uh, 1993. Uh, so this is given by this one. Uh, next is inverse sum uh, in degree index um, is given by this equation, mathematical equation. Okay, so symmetric uh, division uh, degree index is denoted by SDDG is given by this one. Uh, uh, and uh, augmented Jagrav index is given by Fatula. Um, is very new. It, it, it was is, is given by this equation, mathematical equation. Okay. And now is I will be moving on certain graph polynomial. Okay. Uh, uh, generally, uh, we use uh, the mathematical definition to calculate the numerical value of the topological indices. Um, but in the in recent trades, instead of calculating the uh, these topological indices uh, separately, the idea is to calculate them in one go uh, by uh, uh, via certain graph polynomial. Okay, so there are st certain standard graph polynomials uh, are available in the literature of chemical graph theory. One is Hossa polynomial, uh, M polynomial, dot polynomial, matching polynomial, and uh, uh, Clark covering polynomial and so on. Uh, for example, Hosea polynomial is used to calculate the distance based topological indices. And uh, very recently, 2015, M polynomial was proposed. Uh, it was used to, to calculate, proposed by Klebser 
uh, to it is it it is used to calculate the degree dependent topological indices. Hmm. So here is the detail uh, equation. And uh, where m i j basically m i j is the cardinality of the edges u v, where degree of u is equal to i and degree of v is equal to j. Such edges edges will be coming here, and it is a function of x and y. Okay, uh, so uh, and uh, okay, uh, uh, and uh, it is a basically a graph invariant, and it is in this same paper it was written that uh, it was shown that it can be expressed as this one, and with this theorem we can say that. Uh, this uh, degree based uh, to, to, uh, sorry uh, uh, this degree based topological indices can be computed with uh, with this kind of formula where the f of f uh, x y basically dx dy uh, is a function of uh, function depending on the respective uh, topological indices i will come in the next slide These uh, functions uh, for all the nine uh, uh, topological indices. Okay, and their uh, derived uh, derivation formula was given like this, where dx, uh, dy, and these are some uh, operators notation are given here below. Okay, next is uh, come to the uh, our. Uh, uh, structure uh, come to our structure where we have investigated uh, this uh, result, uh, this uh, degree based topological indices. Okay, Chain et al. developed uh, the, uh, an addressing scheme as well as routing and broad broadcasting algorithm for his hexagonal mesh uh, multiprocessor. Okay, hexagonal uh, network are uh, types of a network that is designed using planar graph. Okay, Tri um, uh, triangular plane tessellation. Tessellation or right, uh, conclude your time is over. Okay, sir. Can I take uh, three minutes? It will be finished. Finish. Just okay. organizers, what about you? Yeah. He, uh, wait, wait. Organizers, he wants uh, three more minutes. Yes. So, so that, uh, three minutes is too long. Okay. Uh, to 10 minutes is over. My 10 minutes over. Yeah, 10 minutes is over. So, you may take one more minute and uh, please conclude. Okay, okay. Sure, sir. Okay. Uh, so I will be talking about hexagonal networks whose uh, <clears throat> uh, nodes are uh, and vertices are uh, rectangular. Uh, tessellation has uh, six neighbors in each vertices. Okay, and it this uh, network is used in benzonide hyd hydrocarbons in chemistry as well as image processing, computer graphics, and cellular interconnection network. Okay, and um, <clears throat> the rectangular hexadecimal networks is, looks like this one. Where it, it is a, uh, of dimension n, but I am showing here the rectangular hexadecimal network of dimension four. The four matlab in the base, in there are four vertices. Okay. And next, uh, so there are the main result is that uh, the, with the help of uh, the m polynomial result, we can calculate in general the m, uh, formula for m polynomial for this uh, rectangular hexadecimal network of dimension n. So I am skipping the proof. It is uh, uh, not a uh, big issue. Uh, so uh, uh, for rectangular hexadecimal network and their uh, geometrical interpretation of the polynomial for this uh, uh, rectangular. based on the result given in the table we have calculated here. Proof, I will skip the proof. Uh, I, actually, I have skipped the proof here, uh, made it small here. Okay, so these are the uh, table uh, for uh, this uh, calculate for uh, where we have shown that uh, related uh, degree-based topological indices for different dimension n equal to four, five, six uh, to eight. Okay, so these are the uh, uh, geometrical behavior of the first geographic index, second geographic index, uh, uh, general dynamic index, and augmented, augmented geographic index in this domain. And uh, same same result for uh, second geographic index, inverse dynamic, modified second geographic index, mod, uh, inverse dynamic index, and harmonic index. 
and this is for symmetric division index inverse uh, some degree in uh, some in degree indices and here we we are in the conclusion part we have evaluated uh, the uh, topological indices we mainly with the help of uh, m polynomial we have uh, obtained the m polynomial relation which is a close, uh, closed uh, form of formula for rectangular hexadecimal network of type 3 of dimension n and uh, we can easily see that uh, calculating the, the, the finding the uh, these topological indices uh, from via m polynomial instead of calculating them separately using, using their mathematical formula is much more compact and faster uh, and catchy and further uh, we have illustrated uh, the uh, graphical behavior of the m polynomial as well as the nine degree based topological indices okay so here uh, that's all from my side uh, these are some of the references which we have uh, followed and uh, that's it okay sorry for the delay uh, the delay cost only because of more most, uh, more than five minutes you took for the very basic existing indices that's why you couldn't get uh, more time then huh? try to avoid all these uh, errors in future time okay okay sir uh, because all the indices topology indices mentioned by your is the existing one except the method m polynomial huh? okay. i think m polynomial methods is yours yes no actually m polynomial uh, uh. was proposed by klebser around two, uh. 2015 uh. but we have uh, calculated all and the m polynomial for uh, in general graph they have uh, just shown uh, given a shortcut formula but we have calculated for a rectangular hexadecimal network of type 3 of dimension n but so simply you are saying that it is very fast eh? but uh, actually it, in your percentage your main duty is you have to justify that you should uh, have spent some time for that but instead of that you have, uh, spent more time for the preliminaries hmm. actually you said uh, most of many people uh, 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 stay uh, disconnected uh, if they miss the initial part so i try to highlight what are the some application of this uh, this indices and all those things. so i tried that okay okay, okay. thank you please start the next person okay sir. that's thank you sir okay okay thank you uh, i'm leaving the screen yeah yeah you share you share mm. the best paper category continues Next register number is DM202 on the topic reciprocal edge transmission based topological indices of graph. DM202. Uh, is my screen is visible? Not, not, yet, not yet. I, now it's okay. Is, uh, is the screen is visible? Yeah, yeah. Now it's visible. Okay. Uh, good afternoon to everyone. I am Dr. Saroja Elappa Talwar, working as an assistant professor, Department of Mathematics, Sharda Vilas College, Mysuru. And title of my presentation is Reciprocal Edge Transmission Based Topological Indices of Graphs. And before going to the concept, I would like to just summarize the things what we have done in our research article. As we know that when we talk about graph theory, most of the people, they are working on degree-based topological indices or else um, it is on the spectral part. When it comes to topological indices, there are several studies which are already existing and very old topological indices. I can say that Zagreb indices are there, uh, Weiner index are there and Harare index is there, but we had made a new effort uh, and we had changed the regularity of working only on the degree based topological indices, but uh, as I was being a research scholar, we started on study of distance-based topological indices. So as a continuity, I have published many articles based on status connectivity indices. In this article, we have considered reciprocal status in that particularly edge transmission. And here the degree of an edge is considered, distance between the edge is considered, where the title itself is representing a reciprocal edge transmission means we are taking the definition of a transmission in which the edge is taken into account. Okay, uh, so your slide uh, is uh, the first one. 
place more. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I'll move because I was just summarizing the concept. So uh, this is outline of my presentation. It consists of introduction, bounds for reciprocal edge transmission based topological analysis of graphs, and reciprocal edge transmission based topological analysis of some particular graphs. And I have referred some of the references. um i i i just would like to skip the introductory part i'm hoping that most of the um most of them they are from the background of graph theory and the uh, topological index is nothing but the representation of a molecule which is a carbon carbon skeleton by ignoring the hydrogen atoms and uh, we know the definition of line graph it is nothing but a graph in which edges will act as a vertices and connection between any two vertices in a line graph exists if and only if any two edges are incident in a graph g so edge version of augmented the graph index has been studied widely and degree of a vertex we know how it is defined it is nothing but the number of edges incident to that vertex but how the degree of a edge, edge is defined it is nothing but the sum of Degree of the terminal vertices, which is subtracted by two, because the edge is countered by, and this is a basic definition. And in our concept, instead of going for degree of an edge, degree of an vertex, or distance between the vertices, we are looking for the distance between the edges. Say, for example, as it is showing here, the distance between the edges E and F in any graph G is equal to. the distance between the vertices e and f in a line graph as i told line graph in line graph edges will act as vertices and distance between them in line graph is same as that of the distance between the edges in a main graph this is the main concept and this is what we are using and motivated by the work in this paper we consider a connector graph having n vertices m edges and as usual vg will be denoted as a vertex set h set and this is a, a reciprocal edge transmission of a edge e where e is an edge having two vertices which are the terminal vertices u and v in a graph g is defined as sum of reciprocal of distance between the two edges e and f in a graph g where each edge is coming from f set of g and this is very important for our concept and this uh, and uh, as a, a continuity of the reciprocal edge transmission connectivity index first and second i have just referred this concept which is also our paper and which has been accepted in scopus index journal and next these are the basic definitions based on which i am going to define some of the indices which is some connectivity index abc az that is augmented zaha graph arithmetic geometric geometric arithmetic and inverse sum indic index these are already existing standard definitions and as i told we have considered the distance between the edges based on that in this particular article we have defined reciprocal edge transmission based topological analysis in which we are going to consider reciprocal status of an edge which is nothing but the sum of reciprocal of distance between the pair of edges coming from the edge set so first index similar to that of some connectivity index with respect to degree we have replaced it by reciprocal status of that corresponding edge e and f where they are incident to each other in the edge set of a graph g so these are the definition uh, reciprocal edge transmission connectivity index sum connectivity index geometric arithmetic arithmetic geometry atom bo atom bond connectivity augmented zaha graph and inverse sum indi index and to talk about the concept and i am going to use a lemma in which Uh, cardinality of p1 represent m which is nothing but the number of edges incident to that and p2 is uvw which is nothing but uh, where it is a path of length 2 having a vertex in common and that sum is equal to half of z1 of g minus 2m and this result i have used throughout the article and uh, to talk about the main concept we have given the bounds for reciprocal edge transmission based topological analysis of graphs and however we know it is very difficult to give the exact result when it comes when we do not restrict any diameter i mean when i restrict if we restrict particularly that result i have given for particular class of graphs but in this particular section i have given the upper as well as lower bounds for each of the defined topological indices in terms of res reciprocal of the edge transmission and here uh, in the slide we can see the first theorem 
is the upper as well as lower bound for reciprocal edge transmission sum connectivity index, which is only in terms of degree of the vertices as well as the number of edges of that graph. And equality in this particular uh, bounds holds whenever we restrict diameter of a graph G to two. And the next, next one is for, this is the lower bound and the upper bound for reciprocal edge transmission arithmetic geometric index. And this is for geometric arithmetic index. And the next one, similarly, I have given bound. So without wasting time, I can just say that I have given a lower as well as upper bound only in terms of the number of vertices, edges, and degree of the corresponding vertices. As we are talking about the distance between the edges, where we have simplified and given the result only in terms of either degree or the number of edges, which is very easy to calculate. And equality in both the condition holds whenever we restrict the diameter to two. And similarly, I have given the same result for some connectivity index, atom bond connectivity index, geometric arithmetic, as well as arithmetic geometry, augmented Zagrab index, and inverse some indig index. And these are the results which are uh, running in the slides. So next, in the next section, uh, we focused on giving particular result. However, the result is true in case of uh, the bounds whenever we restrict the diameter to two. But even then, so we have given the results for particular class of graph, such as complete graph, friendship graph, and V only in terms of N. There is no matter of degree. We have taken only in terms of N. If, if we know the order of that particular complete graph, we can directly find its corresponding topological index. Here, the first proposition gives uh, the result for reciprocal edge transmission sum connectivity index of a complete graph only in terms of order of that complete graph. And next, uh, the reciprocal edge transmission geometric arithmetic index of complete graph in terms of N. And similarly, arithmetic geometric index in terms of N, atom bond connectivity index, augmented Zaha graph, and inverse sum index status index in terms of order of that particular graph. And the next proposition will focus on the result for complete bipartite graph, where the result we have given precisely on, only in terms of P and Q. Whenever we talk about complete bipartite graph, it should be partitioned into two vertex sets with a cardinality P of the first vertex set and Q of second vertex set. When that is clear, so it is easy for us to find the result. Similarly, the same result for KPQ for all the six indices have been given where we can see the results on the slide. So these are the results for KPQ. Um, and similarly, we have given results only in terms of order for wheel graph having N plus one matrices. And these are the results for all the six indices we have given. And similarly, we have given result for friendship graph. As I told, we have focused only on the particular class of graph where we can find the result in particularly by making use of a simple parameter. And these are the list of references that I have referred. And the, this is really a new concept. And we could find very, very few articles. And I have seen only edge transmission based uh, in, in Zagreb indices. Uh, there are some work. Other than that, there is no work is or the literature is available on this particular concept. And uh, we have published one of these. Uh, so this is about uh, my okay. presentation. Uh, okay. Uh, available materials are very less. Yes, Even sir. then you didn't say anything about any the edge transmission. What do you mean by edge transmission of a graph? Sir, edge transmission of a graph is defined as sum of distance between the two edges where uh, each of the edges coming from uh, the edge set of a graph G. So there are two concepts. Actually, that concept also defined by us and some of the articles communicated to the journals where we have defined edge transmission. And in this article, we are talking only about reciprocal edge transmission. Edge transmission is defined as sum of distance and reciprocal edge transmission is defined as sum of a reciprocal of the distance. That, that is, is the difference between both of them. The relation between arithmetic and the harmonic. Uh, yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Can you give any, uh, can you justify the significance of your result? 
in the so, uh, one article uh, in which we have considered all these indices and for the regression analysis of paraffins we have considered the and by making use of spss software paraffins, that is paraffins and alkanes are only so we yeah. we have consider only paraffin so paraffin. not all, not software. not all canes uh, no sir okay only for pa paraffins huh? oh, yes sir yes sir so we have taken into consideration of paraffins and uh, i have taken four pa parameters boiling point melting point uh, density and molecular mass and this data i have obtained from the chemistry research articles and the topological indices for this particular paraffins as it said paraffins we can consider carbon carbon skeleton for them so i have calculated the indices for this paraffin and regression analysis of this uh, the degeneracy goes very close to one third so that without going for the actual experimentation we can uh, we can have a idea like whether uh the indices that we are obtaining a uh, good or not that we can do in the uh, the research article previous to this actually uh, we have communicated more than eight articles in the same field so one of the article on the reciprocal transmissions only we have work this is a continuity which has been almost uh, already accepted in scopus industry journal sir did you correlate any of uh, your work with the existing methods is there uh, Uh, yes sir actually uh, we But, know that status of a status uh, connectivity index has been already defined by harare sir so our research work also begins with the same concept but they have defined for only the directed edges but we have started uh, but not considering the directed edges when it comes to directed edge there is no much possibility of getting or reaching every other vertices of that particular graph so we have generalized instead of considering the directed edges we have taken the edges and the relation between uh, our indices and the other indices is degree distance of topological indices has been studied by uh, professor sharabdini from uh, from one of the gulf countries sir. so both of the results are coincides at that particular point but the study is entirely different we can compare at particular point both the indices will coincide only for one point i have observed and i have mentioned in one article also sir you should take care of it the connectivity index first yes, introduced sir. by harari is very much outdated there are so many uh, advanced yes. connectivity indices are now available yes sir yes sir so through it you sir, can uh, refine the, uh, the i have seen yes uh. sir but the thing is i have seen most of the people are working on distance between the vertices but not the distance between the edges yeah. the study is purely based on distance between the edges so uh, in the literature also no much uh, research articles or uh, the related literature is available sir this is yeah. i i think this is a little bit new concept but uh, you have to think one uh, one thing mind in your yeah the, it is uh, sometimes it may be very less in edge uh, transmission but all results uh, edge analogs are uh, okay. depend upon okay. the vertex yes sir everything on vertex then edge analog come mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. new things are always introduced in vertex basis yes sir edge basis are the uh, vertex analog okay okay, okay, okay. Thank, 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 you. thank you thank you for your suggestions so thank okay, you very much thank you. all the next one next chess number dm213 on the topic fourier cosine transform for fuzzy integrable domains register number dm213 dm213 are you there register number dm213 are you there otherwise please go to that that is not in the uh, best paper presentation category okay dm213 your last call is over moving on to the next paper presentation dm209 dm209 
Do not mind, please share your screen. BM two not nine, please share your screen. You may start now. BM two not nine, are you there? Yeah, yeah. She is trying. Please wait. My screen are visible, sir. Yeah, now it's visible. Please. Ah, thank you. Good afternoon to all. I'm Yes Harita, second MSc Mathematics from ST Humans College, Manarkudi. Today, my topic is a comparative study on solve game problem using fuzzy ranking technique. This is my abstract. In this paper, I solving the game problem were compared by ranking technique. Introduction. Game theory is the study of mathematical models of strategic interactions among rational agents. It, ha it has applications in all fields of social science, well as in logic, system science, and computer science. Originally, it addressed to two percent zero sum games, in which each participant's gain or losses are exactly balanced by those of other participants. Fuzzy discrete number. A fuzzy subset A of R with a membership mapping A from R to zero comma one is uh, called a discrete fuzzy number. It is finite. That is, there exists x one, x two, and so on, x n. Where x1 less than or equal less than x2 less than x3 less than x4 and so on less than x n such that supremum of a is equal to x1 x2 and x3 and so on x n and there are the two natural numbers s and t where one less than or equal to s less than or equal to t less than or equal to n such that if a of x i equal to one then the natural number i uh, in between of s and t uh, if a of x i less than or equal to a of x j each natural number i and j within one less than or equal to i less than or equal to j less than or equal to n if a of x i greater than or equal to a of x j each natural number i and j within uh, t less than uh, less than or equal to i less than or equal to j less than or equal to n hexagonal fuzzy number a fuzzy number a of h is a hexagonal fuzzy number denoted by a of h a1 a2 a3 a4 a5 a6 uh, where a1 to a6 are the real numbers mu of a is the membership function this is the membership function of a hexagonal fuzzy number central ranking method uh, the central ranking of hexagonal fuzzy number a of h is equal to a b c d e f uh, there are hexagonal fuzzy number Fuzzy number, a g of a is equal to 2a plus 6b plus c plus d plus 6c plus 2f divided by 18, comma 5w, comma 5w divided by 18. The ranking function of a generalized fuzzy number, r of a of a h equal to 2a plus 6b plus c plus d plus 6e plus 2f divided by 18 into 5w divided by 18. Robust ranking method. If a of a h is a convex fuzzy number, robust ranking index is defined by R of AH equal to integral 0 to 1, 0 0.5 into A alpha power L, A alpha power U uh, into D alpha, where A alpha power L comma A alpha power U is equal to B minus A of alpha plus A comma D minus of D minus C into alpha comma D minus of C into alpha plus C comma F minus of F minus E into alpha. This is the alpha level cut of your fuzzy numbers. Now, now we saw the example for game problem. There are two players in this game. The values are given. Um, now we find the value of the game. First, shall we solve it in this problem in central ranking method uh, using the formula 2a plus 6b plus c plus d plus 6e plus 2f divided by 18 comma in 5w divided by 18 where w is equal to 1. Uh, now we take the hexagonal fuzzy numbers to apply the central ranking method. We get the first value is 0 0.277. Similarly, applying this formula in this other fuzzy discrete numbers, after we get the values, 
after we find the values of the gain using the formula v is equal to a11 a2 into a22 minus of minus of a21 into a12 divided by a11 plus a22 minus of a21 plus a12 after we using this formula we get the solution the value of the gain is 0.0925 next next we apply the same problem in robust ranking method using the formula r of a is equal to integral 0 to 1 into 0.5 into a alpha power l comma a alpha phi power u into d alpha uh, we get the value for first one is 0.6025 similarly we getting the following values after after we find the values of the gain similarly we using the formula v is equal to a11 into a22 minus of a12 into a21 divided by a11 plus a22 minus of a12 plus a21 the value of the gain is 0.354 in this conclusion in this paper a game problem whose values are taken in discrete hexagonal fuzzy numbers the discrete hexagonal fuzzy numbers are converted into crisp values using centroid ranking and robust ranking method uh, the value of the game uh, value of the game is obtained by a uh, linear programming method uh, the robust ranking method proves uh, better better than centroid ranking method this is my opinion this is also my reference thank you rajo mari actually appreciate you for your interest but one thing for a presentation like a best paper present award the contents must be your own huh? your contributions now you have studied something existing in game theory i appreciate once again your interest okay thank you sir okay for the other one next register number dm11 next register number dm211 dm211 are you there dm211 on the topic a study on cooperative and non cooperative game theory security for wireless sensor networks you may start now I think DM two one one is not there. Last call of DM two one one is over. Now, DM two one four, please start your presentation. DM two one four, please start. Ah, your presentation. Ah, yes, ma'am. I am Yash Vaitishwari. I present the topic in multi-functioning nano ideal space. Next, next, please, please. Yes, next, ID, ID, sorry, uh, your address is not given in the slide. Please share. Ah, ah, yes. Please. Hi, my. Hi, sir. I am Vaitishwari, assistant professor of mathematics in Sri Krishna Swami Arts and Science College in Sathur. Okay, please. Next, please. This is the outline of the presentation: nano topological space, nano i continuous, nano i weakly continuous, nano i j weakly continuous. Uh, conclusion and the reference. Next slide. First, first we define the approximation space. Let U be an non-empty finite set. It called universe and R be an equivalence relation the pair u comma r is said to be approximation space then we define the lower approximation of x with respect to r it denoted by lr of x equal to union x belongs to u such a fall r of x such that r of x subset of capital x next slide then we define the upper approximation of x With respect to R, it denoted by U R of X equal to union X belongs to U R of X such that R of X intersection X non-empty. Then define the the boundary region of X with respect to R. 
it is the difference between upper and lower approximation next slide the collection of empty u lr of x ur of x dr of x it's called the nano topology denoted by dr of x dr of x the pair u comma Tower of X is called nano topological space. The elements of tower of X is called nano open sets. If nano closed, if the complement is nano open. Next slide. Multifunction. The function is defined by a point to set. It's called multifunction. Then define a plus of A equal to X belongs to X such that f of x subset of a and f minus of a equal to x belongs to x such that fx intersection a non-empty. Next slide. Then define the local function. Local function in topological space is come out of. It is a function from power set of, power set of x to power set of x. a star of dou comma i equal to x such that a intersection u belong, does not belong to i for every u belongs to tower of x where u is an Open set of X. Next slide, please. Nano ideal space. The a nano topological space with ideal is called nano ideal space. It denoted by U. It denoted by U comma tower of X comma I. Next slide. Then define the nano I continuous. It is multifunction, multifunction from nano ideal space to nano topological space. So to be upper nano I continuous that X belongs to U if each N open set W of T such that X belongs to F plus of W there exist on nano I open set X containing X such that X subset of F plus of W. We similar to define the nan lower nano I continuous lo lower nano I continuous with the F minus W set. Then we define nano I continuous. It is both upper and lower nano I continuous. Next slide, please. It is the example I defined by nano ideal space to topological space with the with the topology dower of x equal to empty u uh, a comma b and dower of y equal to empty v singleton x singleton y comma x defined by f of a equal to singleton x f of b equal to singleton x f of c equal to singleton x it's also f is nano i continuous and also both low upper and lower nano i continuous next slide then theorem if f is upper nano i continuous then f is lower nano i continuous the converse of the theorem is not true for the example next slide theorem if a does not belongs to i that is a does not belongs to ideal where a is n open then every n open set is nano i open set again one theorem if f is upper n semi continuous and a does not belongs to i where a is n open set then f is upper nano i continuous the converse is also not true next then we define nano i weakly continuous a multifunction defined by nano ideal space to nano topological space is said to be upper nano i weakly continuous at x belongs to u if each n open set w of b such that x belongs to f plus of w there exist on nano i open set x containing x such that x subset of f plus of n closure of w that means nano closure Enclosure is nano closure. Then we similar to define lower nano I weakly continuous. Then we define nano I weakly continuous. It both up both upper and lower nano I weakly continuous. Next slide. Theorem: If f is upper nano I weakly continuous, then f is lower nano I weakly continuous. The converse of the theorem is not true given in the example. Next slide. If f is upper nano upper n weakly continuous and a does not belongs to i where a is n open set then f is upper nano i weakly continuous next theorem on f is lower n weakly continuous and a does not belongs to i where a is n open set then f is lower nano i weakly continuous both of the theorem is converse is not true then we define nano ij weakly continuous a function is defined by nano ideal space to nano ideal space is said to be upper nano i comma j weakly continuous at x belongs to you if each j j open set w of v such that x belongs to w f plus of w there exist on 
nano i open set x containing x such that x subset of f plus of j in closure of w then we then we define similar to lower nano ij weakly contains if we define nano ij weakly contains both are both upper and lower ij weakly contains next slide nano upper nano i weakly contains and upper nano ij weakly contains are not comparable next slide please next slide example 1 is defined by fun multi function f it is it is upper nano i weakly contains but not but not upper nano ij weakly contains next slide please example 2 shows that f is upper nano ij weakly contains but not f is upper nano i weakly contains next slide please again one theorem multi function is defined by nano ideal space to nano ideal space the given the following statement are equivalent f is upper nano ij weakly contains then f plus of w is subset of i n i n interior of f plus j n closure of w for any nano j open set w of b i n closure of f minus j n interior of b subset of f minus of b for any nano j closed conclusion i do i define the nano i weakly contains and nano ij weakly contains by using the nano i open sets then we also define upper n semi contains upper n alpha o, alpha open contains also next slide please this are the represents uh, reference of the paper thank you okay after defining nano i uh, ij ideal spaces you are uh, you tried to define weakly space what is the important of that the first we got uh, so many results on yeah. ij ideal space then you tried to define ij weakly ah uh, yes sir is there uh, what is the important of that or what is the role of ij weakly in the presence of nano uh, continuous can no. i can this yes. thank you sir definition please i don't know that i don't want any mm. definition how oh, okay, so define the nano uh, i mm. continuous after nice. that you try to uh, define weakly so nice. is there any important or is there any necessity comes to define such a term um in i in nano i continuous we define only i open set after we weakly continuous um, we define by closure of j uh, oh. closure of j j is nano i open set that means uh, if you define some nano i weakly continuous you, something cannot be done in the uh, nano continuous space you can define i weakly and uh, the things which cannot be done in that space can be done in such a result is not mentioned anywhere that's why i am asking that's okay oh, okay oh, okay. Sir. okay okay thank you thank you sir thank you. next test number is dm211 dm211 okay uh next is dm213 dm213 are you there okay i think dm211 and 213 are not there their time is up suresha is there something for you to share with us what do you want to share something you would like something mean uh, some comments some comments uh, uh, your experience or something you would uh, you okay. want to comments on this common platform is not a acceptable one i think so i will let you inform the uh, exact position of this uh, presentation it is not so good i think so <laughs> in the open platform <laughs> okay sir thank you uh, participants please note that uh, the feedback link is posted on your chat box uh, after filling the feedback link you will get the participation certificates via mail okay now i would like to invite 
Gada ma'am, for the word of thanks. Oh, that is not necessary. <laughs> Good evening all. It is my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on behalf of Fatima Mada National College and Department of Mathematics, extend very sincere gratitude to yeah, Professor Suri Singh sir for accepting our invitation to chair the paper presentation session and for the valuable yeah, comments I that that and I finally would thank all of you who presented here and for making the time to be with us today and helping us to make this event a great success. Thank you all for being with us. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Our paper presentation session is over. Before winding up, let's move on to the validity function. For that, I invite Dr. Minu Sardi, ma'am, for the word of thanks. Without mathematics, there is nothing you can do. Everything around you is mathematics. Everything around you is numbers. Good afternoon, everyone. It's my privilege to propose a vote of thanks speech and acknowledge the contribution of those who worked really hard to make this program happen. First of all, I extend my most sincere thanks to the Almighty Lord for making this conference a success. Without his, with his blessings and grace, we were able to make this conference what it was. On behalf of, on behalf of my department, I extend a hearty word of thanks to our management and to our manager, Reverend Dr. Ablash Grigori Father, and to our principal, Dr. Jojo P.J. Sir, for their support, for their long-lasting support. Thank you. I'm immensely thankful to PTA for funding this international program. Thank you so much for all your efforts. I would like to thank IQC for their technical support and all the support. Especially, I thank Prajit Sir for your time and all your efforts to help us. Now, I extend a hearty note of thanks to all the respected dignitaries, Dr. A. R. Rajan sir, Dr. R. Kalam ma'am, Dr. Telvina Santini sir, Dr. Asha Sunil Kumar ma'am, and Dr. Ambli Ambat Ashwin ma'am, who spared time from their busiest schedule to grace the occasion. We had such a great opportunity to hear your lectures. Thank you. Thank you so much for providing us with such valuable, valuable information. Thank you so much. I would also like to extend my gratitude to Suresh sir, Archana ma'am and Prahash sir, who chaired our paper presentation sessions. Thank you so much for supporting us so much. Also, I thank all the participants of the paper presentation sessions for responding to our con conference and participating in it. Thank you. Now, I thank all my colleagues for their dedication and willingness to take this, uh, uh, willingness to take on the completion of beyond their comfort zones. A special mention to our HOD, Dr. Anwar Gisma, and to our coordinator, Roshni Miss, a coordinator of our program, and uh, to all my uh, colleagues, um, uh, Miss Sindhu ma'am, 
Miss Sindhu, ma'am, Dr. Anil Kumar, sir, Miss Anjum, ma'am, Miss Dada, Miss, and uh, Miss, uh, Miss Amu, Miss, for their support and uh, for their support and cooperation. Then I, uh, then I thank our dear students for their technical support. Our dear students, Venus, Diana, and Sneha, Anina, and Kriba for their technical support and cooperation, cooperation and their cooperation. So, uh, thank you so much. And last but not least, a big thank you to each one of you who made this program memorable for all of us. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, Anand Jok. Thank you, Minu. Thank you, dear participants. Thank you, Minu. Thank you, dear participants. Uh, feedback link is given in the chat box. Please fill up it. You will receive the participation certificate in your re registered mail ID. Uh, best paper presentation award, uh, the recipient will uh, be informed through mail. Presentation certificate will also be sent through your registered mail. Thank you.